Always happy in Morocco to just spoon. Politicians want to make their decision just to just spoon. You want to know what happened in the ministry to just spoon. Yes, uh, tune to spoon wherever you are and whatever you are doing. Uh, it's a pleasant, pleasant good evening here from uh, Odious Congo Town in Minerva, Liberia. Welcome to yet another uh, fascinating edition of uh, the Spoon Talk, your most informative and analytical nighttime um, talk show here in uh, Minerva, Liberia. Uh, my name is Yekezi Zube, uh, sitting in tonight as your producer. Uh, I'm going to be joined by uh, later on by the CEO and, of course, uh, his uh, team of uh, panelists uh, so that they can, you know, take you through the discussion. But I'm seeing James Goodeflomo, 
uh, from the other side is Ben Y. James. Good evening and welcome. Good evening, Yekezi. How do you do? I'm okay. How yourself? It's been a while. My man, myself, it's been a while, bro. I'm okay. God money me. I've hmm. been thinking. I thought you 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 moved to the People Republic of Nima, according to you. <laughs> Nima is my home. I'm there often. I'm you know there off and on. You know, I got family there, I got a lot of good people there. But I'm yeah, here. I'm actually I work I here. I, I attend to all of my schedules here. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So I don't know what's going on with James, but uh, James uh, will join us uh, later on the show. But folks, uh, welcome wherever you are and whatever you are doing. Hello? Uh, yeah. James, you want to come in? Yeah, I said the last time I saw a post from you, I think it was about it was about the big man. I saw the big man picture. With the big man? Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, yeah, yeah, big man. that's it. That's it. That's it. Uh, how he's yeah. doing? Yeah, good man. It's it's good to be here again uh, this evening to serve the people of Liberia uh, to give them uh, information that they need to know. And I'd like to say good evening to all of you following the show uh, this evening. Dualu hasn't yet joined us uh, to call you out by names, uh, so we will try to do that until he comes. I uh, saw so Moagbe Kamara is uh, following the show from Norway, Oslo. Christiana and GC Massacre is also following the show. Annie Flomo is following the show. Josiah Tamba Yato Fole is also following the show. Alice Ban is uh, following the show. Eddie Kowa is following the show from uh, Canada. Uh, Hashim. Fembula says, good evening, guys. Hashim is following the show. Uh, Norma Dennis is following the show from Philadelphia. Uh, Stephen D. Gall is following the show. Mary Lincoln is also following the show. Um, Seku M. Dabate is following the show. Kolu Konto is following. Uh, Vinicius Moba is following. Uh, Rende Flomo is following. Uh, Ashbel Ebenezer Likbele is following the show. Collins Yempan is following. Isaac Neville is following. Angeline Smith is following. Uh, Amstrong Wabenda is following. Uh, Tension McCarthy Sherman is following. Tommy Johnson is following. Uh, Leon uh, Benda is following. Alex G. Brent is following. Uh, good evening. Good evening to everybody. Everybody following the show uh, this evening. We may not be able to, you know, call all of your names, but uh, as we go on with the show, we hope to pin some of your comments and your names on the stream. I mean, yeah, who would be your against there? Let, let me see. Um, we settle. We settle zero zero. Um, zero zero for the next. Okay. Episode. Yeah. Group D. Zero zero, Grand Barca and Lofa. Yeah, both Barca, both Barca and Lofa will surface on SKT. Yeah. Page. So uh, River G beat her game uh, two zero uh, with Sano uh, in Group A. Grand G there also beat her game with uh, Maryland three uh, two. Montserrado defeated Grand Cape Mount County two zero. Bapalu defeated uh, Bomi two one. Uh, in Nimba County defeated uh, Riverside County three goals to one. Bon County did the same three goals to one uh, with Grand Crew, and of course uh, Grand Bassa and Lofa County drew. So according to uh, the next fixture, uh, the National County Sport meets uh, qualified counties to the Naco stage. Nimba County has been paired. Bon County, Lofa has been paired with Grand Bassa County, Montserrat has been paired with Bomi County, and River G has been paired, has been paired with uh, Grand Gita County. Yeah. Why, why they did that? Lofa, Lofa and Bassa just played today. Again, you pair them. I don't know. Yeah. So that's that's that that's the information I'm getting from the Ministry of Youth and Sports chat room here now. They did. They, uh, I'm coming. They did a draw, or the draw is tomorrow. I think that is not confirmed. The job should be tomorrow. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm aware of that. Okay, but I, I think that is just uh, presumptive uh, features that they're coming out with. They are assuming that those are the countries okay. that will be meeting. I'm not yeah. sure. Yeah, so actually, actually, there is no head, but it's this this information is actually from uh, the Ministry of Youth and Sports um, chat room. Yeah, but yeah, uh, let's 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 yet wait and see whether it's is is a confirmed draw. No, it's, it, I, I, I'm I'm hundred percent sure that it is not confirmed because. Oh, happened? You 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 have read a you have read a lofa if I grand buzzer. I just uh, I just stopped Basel from beating me. They were they were they were blessed. <laughs> ah, bro, stop that, man. Lofa, Lofa, Lofa is currently the talk of the town. Uh, Lofa has the best team, and the only country I really want for Lofa to be paired with is Nima, Nima eh? because Nima has. Nima has this spirit of intimidation. You, you don't want to go so anywhere, people. James. Lova, Lova, Lova doesn't want to go anywhere. Brother, if, 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 if Lova wants wants to, to win the, the counter sport meet this year, you you wishing to be paired with Nimba? Bro, Lofa is prepared than ever before. Okay. This time mm. is our time. You prepare, but you get you get you get a big grand buzzer, but you prepare. Then, then how did I qualify? Yeah, you qualify, but you didn't beat Grand Grand Basel, and you, you now you're not coming me. to, 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 to a very me. tough. You come, you now coming to a very tough stage. This is this is the stage where men meet, where yeah. we where we have boys and men meeting, but now in men back, to men. In, in the in the in the in the back in, in the back, yeah, you didn't show Grand Basel what you are made of. That even the people, <laughs> bro, this country meet. We are going to repeat. In elevate history. Okay. Yeah, I know. It's, it's easy to say that, but uh, it, it's obviously I just speaks louder than the words. Yeah. So That's... just for just for clarity again, uh, that result we are now hundred percent. Yeah, uh, we're not sure of it. Yeah. We yeah. Hopefully, the result will be up next week, beginning tomorrow or Monday. Uh, we, we might get a full result, and I'm I'm like. You know, eighty percent sure that Lofa and Basel will not meet because these are the counties that are from the same zone. So in football, basically how to do it, uh, those, those from the same zone, maybe like what we've been seeing around the the, the first the first uh, team to tap the zone may let them meet the second the second person in the following zone, just like that. But it would be impossible to just pay. Lofa and Barca and again, that is Liberia. It's okay. possible. I, I I I hope I hope Lofa can be paired with Nimba. Uh, that 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 will be an interesting game. A very very. Did Lofa tap the? It, 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 it will not be. It, it will not really be a difficult game for Nimba. But how many points you qualify I'm, with? I'm, I'm talking about the momentum. So I qualify with uh, six points. How uh, many four, points five, Lofa seven points. With? Se seven points. I qualify with seven points. What about Lofa? Uh, I can tell. I can. I. I. I can tell right now for Lofa. Then, except, this is disgraceful. Except a check. This is disgraceful for me. I, I'm forgetting the number of points that we qualify with. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, okay. So let, let me see. Earlier or um, <laughs> Lofa. Let me see where Lofa is here. Lofa. 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 Okay. So Lofa, four points. Lofa, four, four points. points? Yeah, the qualifier uh, was, was four points Lofa. because they it, it, it drew today. What about uh, Barca? How many points? Um, Barca, two points. Oh, then Lofa and Nimba will not. No, let, let me get Barca right. But yeah, Barca are, Barca are two points. Two then points. Lofa and Lofa and, uh, and Nimba will not meet because they tap their zone. Yeah. Nimba, Lofa is going to meet a team that came second in another zone, and Barca will meet a team that tap. First in another zone. Yeah, so we are looking out for that. Um, hopefully, uh, and I mean everybody coming to the county now. The, the the big boys are coming to the county. The big teams are are now coming to the county. No, we're and coming to the city. We will see. We will we'll see who will divacola. We were in the counties. We're coming to the city and remember. Yeah, the city. That's the city. That's that's yeah, what I mean. We are already hailing the republic. You had a problem with it. We are already heading the republic. 
the the different the, the different head of Republic at, at Lufa. <laughs> <laughs> Remember history where George Bia took over. Which uh, country won a country meet that year? I mean, and, <laughs> that was that was CDC. Then there's Unity Party, and we uh, we. We we all we 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 all we all we all knew what what happened at that time. Uh, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to give my opinion on that. But I mean, uh, that's not that's not going to be. And uh, if the way depending on is it Lova prepared, I already know. Yeah, the Babylon, the Babylon, the Babylon. That that's easy. <laughs> all right. So, folks, uh, that's it. It was uh, wonderful, wonderful today. Uh, River says actually tried. You know, they defeated us first half, but mm. went and yeah, they 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 were in the lead first first half, but we went and came back, swallowed on GB, and you know, of course, uh, we knocked it off with uh, three goals. Yes, but they tried. They tried. They, they actually okay. tried. Yeah, so okay, um, I, I'm seeing oh, I'm seeing all official feature here. This one says the feature Lofa versus Bombing, Nimba, Grand Jida, River G. Uh, ah, what is that? Lofa Bombing again, then Bombing, uh, uh, River G. Bombing. Ah, oh, no, uh, no, all right, go ahead. Yeah, so let's let's just wait to 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 get the the the, the official fixture from um. Yeah, let's let's wait to get the, the actual fixture uh, from um, the, the Ministry uh, of Youth and Sports. Sports. Yeah, yeah. Well, if it's simple, we need to celebrate because this is our time again. We yeah, must... every year I have time, but I think I'm not going. <laughs> if we can beat, every year if, if, we can, if, if we can defeat uh, yes. former FIFA Player of the Year and. The darling board of Liberia, then who we can defeat? Watch okay. and see. Yeah, we're watching. We're watching. Watching with uh, eagle eyes. Let's see how it plays out. Uh, yeah, okay. So, folks, Go that's ahead. it. The yeah. the spoon talk right here on uh, spoon one hundred seven point five. Uh, a lot of training issues also happening in the country, as you may know. On Tuesday. Uh, the by elections in uh, Nimba and Grand Jida County uh, mm. will, will be held. And today, right. um, the Unity Party candidate there in uh, Nimba County, um, you know, launched his campaign. Yeah, Yan, Yan Tuayan officially launched his uh, campaign there in Gompa City today. And I'm Yan Tuayan. Yan Tuayan. Why got Tono now? Is it Yan, Yan Tuayan? <laughs> 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 yeah, Yan Tuayan officially launched his mm -hmm. campaign today in Gampas City, Nima County, and I uh, the place was, you know, um, overcrowded. There were a lot of supporters um, there from various parts of uh, the county. You know, uh, Nima County record uh, for support to the Unity Party um, uh, from the previous election. Uh, and that is exactly what we saw there in Ganta today. Uh, supporters gathered on the principal street of Ganta, you know, to show their support to um, Yan Tuayen. But again, um, uh, sometimes you don't just judge, you know, the outcome of the election or you don't want to predict the outcome of the election based on the crowd that gathered to support you. Um, but from the look of things, uh, Yan Tuayen is uh, one of the formidable uh, forces in that particular election because we have him. Um, we have uh, Thomas Gruppi, uh, former senator. Yeah, some, yeah, yeah, former senator Thomas Gruppi. We have Samia Koga, uh, uh, representative, current representative, and uh, we have another person in in the race, Gobaslepo. It's also there from uh, Nimba County. They, they, are, they, are, they are all in the race. Uh, but Yan Tuayan happens to be a very, very... Uh, yeah, guess you, uh, what was your name? Yeah, I just, I just saw that. Sorry. Yeah. I just saw that. Okay. Yeah, so um, that's it. Uh, we hope that uh, the process can go on peacefully and, 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 and free and fair. Uh, come Tuesday of next week. So, uh, you know, uh, Yekezi, 
before we told people uh, all many Liberians believed yesterday that crowd politics was not important but let me give you a few history of crowd politics that turned out uh, to be a real win. Senator Abraham D uh, Daros Dillon in 2020, let's get the record straight. When Thomas P. Fala, Senate, uh, Representative Thomas P. Fala did his launch, and the Dillon launch compared to Thomas P. Fala, we saw more people turning out during the launch ceremony. The entire Monrovia was locked down, and it was like a tsunami. We saw what happened in Monrovia. I covered that event. So you don't have to tell us. He did the 360. He did the 360 from Liberty Party headquarters through uh, Central Monrovia, Somalia Drive, uh, to Red Light, uh, the Todman Boulevard, and to Unity Party headquarters. We saw the entire street guard <laughs> populated. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what, 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 what basically I'm saying is it's not something to, to always you know trust. It's not something to always go by because... Um, also, looking back, uh, you can remember during that same election, you, know, you also saw the kind of crowd that, you know, um, um, and Thomas Fala put up. But so, the long campaign launch was more than Thomas Fala. You, 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 you did see the crowd, the crowd that, that Thomas Fala put, uh, put up. The so, long campaign launch it's, 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 was it's, more it's, than that, Thomas P. Fala. I, I think it's, it's not always, you know, uh, always uh, prudent uh, enough to just go by the crowd. Uh, always. Uh, sometimes, it's, yes, the crowd yeah, policy is sometimes it doesn't. Yeah, it's a clear indication. Richard's in the back. I don't know whether she I wants to she come I think she has on. the power to come on. Oh, okay. All right. Do you? All right. No, she, she said no. Okay. Oh, two or all went at the same time. Sorry. I've been thinking all, all, all along that you, you can come on by yourself. Okay, dog welcome. You are muted. You are muted. <laughs> they dissolve their party so she won't get fed up, brother. No, 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 no. She said she blocked me. It took me off. I'm unable to get on. So you should talk. You, your CEO, need to talk about why well, I'm unable to control whether I can get on or mute anybody right now. And what you oh, said about my okay. party, I wasn't even listening to y'all doing something else. What are you talking about my party now? No, 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 no. We're discussing the upcoming election. In, in the man? Thank God, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I'll do something else, but you know, I, I wanted to add my voice to what I guess you were saying about this crowd politics business. Mm -hmm. We need to move away from crowd politics in Liberia. Why? Because you can see that it's easy to get a crowd. I can pay somebody a couple of rice, I can get you t shirt. I can say my knee is Joe Blow. Come vote for me. I just go around. I can put music on. I can get some king juice, alcohol. Plenty of people will show up. Okay. They are not showing up for the substance. They are not showing up about, about up for what would make like you a better place. They are not showing up for competency or meritocracy. They are only showing up because somebody say, Come, I know you, or I give you a better rest, or I give you a t-shirt. And that crowd politics popularity will not change our country to take us to the next step in the United States. Okay, the reason people can vote for popularity, but people also vote for competent popularity. Okay, because the system is so different. Education is mandatory in this country, so most people will have some sort of education. In our country, we don't have that. So what we rely on is instant gratification. Instant gratification in the way of happiness, happiness, music, uh, good times, cup of rice, uh, some give you something like t-shirt. And so that is why I'm saying popularity will not make Liberia to move over to get above the threshold or the conundrum that we are in right now. It will not do that. So like I say, I want to side with you on that. Yeah, sure. Sure, because I mean, like like you said, it's, it's it's very easy to get a crowd in Liberia. Very very easy. Once you are launching your campaign, you do your framework. Uh, what politicians do normally here, they go about paying people. We 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 saw um a lot of that during the the previous election. 
Uh, so the crowd just showing up, it does not mean that, you know, they are going to vote for you or it does not mean that you are going to win an election based on the crowd there. The crowd may be there for various reasons. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. So, so, uh, so what's the update in Nima, by the way? I'm sorry, I missed that part. Yeah, so the, the election will be on Tuesday. And uh, yes, they, uh, the Unity Party candidate, Jan Toyan, launched his uh, campaign um, okay. officially. Um, oh. And yeah, uh, it was attended. Uh, the, the vice president uh, was there and other officials there of the county they all attended um the campaign but one thing uh one person that i haven't gotten information about his presence there was uh senator prince yami johnson and it would be interesting to know that whether he was there and the, the, and the supporting Koga. this is from news that we we, we gather the prince johnson supporter is supporting Koga, right yeah so he is he's, he's not been definitive about that um, the other time when he was questioned about, because there was this uh, uh, video footage circulating social media where he, he was, you know, giving blessing to Samuel Koga. Yes. Uh, so uh, people, uh, based on that video, a lot of people uh, uh, thought that he had declared his support to Samuel Koga. But then when he was questioned by journalists about that, he said Samuel Koga only came to him for blessing. And he gave Samuel Koga his blessing as a, a man of God. He's willing to give anybody blessing. Anybody who wants blessing from him, he's willing to give out his, his blessing. But uh, he was that def definite about whether he declared support to Samuel Koga. No. Okay. Yeah. But at the time, he said uh, he supports the Unity Party. Uh, so um, obviously, he's going to support, uh, declare his support to uh, the Unity Party candidate. But since he said that, um, I've not heard him talk about the campaign activity in in in, in Nima County or to come out to say that he's uh, campaign, uh, campaigning for Yan Twai, who's the Unity Party candidate. You know, I find that very interesting because wasn't Prince Johnson? You guys correct me if, if you know if I'm mistaken here. Didn't he also say that Koga does not respect him? There was a tape that I heard where he was saying that Koga does not respect him, and yeah. um, so he wasn't really sure if he, if he should support Koga. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's true. It's true. Okay. He he said that he 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 and Koga, you know, uh, uh, been 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 having some some disagreements, you know, uh, and, uh like Thomas Grupi, he and he and Koga been having some disagreements. But uh, according to him, this day Koga homoed himself, came to him for blessing, and uh, it, it, it's, it's, yeah, you better stop that. <laughs> into him for blessing, he said, as a man of God. I mean, everybody uh, uh, coming to him for blessing, he, he, he can't, he can't, he can't uh, deny them. He's a man of God, so he's always giving his blessing out to to anybody who wants it. Okay, so uh, at least that would be good for for him. So uh, that the Regency and Yekezi cannot come in. Yeah, that the Regency. Uh, you 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 came in from a very good perspective. I'm sorry to take you back to this crowd politics. Uh, even in political science now, political scientists are are very confused what's happening in the world. And the last time we saw one happening in America was former President Donald Trump. There's this uh, type of politics. Uh, or politicians we call, or people who take part in politics, we call them, uh, or we call it uh, populism, right? These are people who who get people supporting them. The last person we had in our republic as president was George Weir, who was not a typical politician, but people, pop, uh, populist leaders are, are those who they love them. Either the person is a musician, the person is a, a former soccer player, an activist or just known for something in their community and sometimes based on their advocacy one of them just got elected in Senegal. The, the, the president of Senegal is a populist 
who, uh, because of his activism and so forth, the young people believe in him that uh, he, he will make a change. But the sad part of populism, these people, when they get to power, they will talk about ills in government, they, they will point out these ills and so forth. But when they get to power, they tend to damage everything because uh, they don't have the understanding. So crap politics, because of populism, crowd politics is changing the dynamic around the entire globe. Donald Trump won in America as a populist, and we saw people group, uh, coming out for him. Yes, uh, some say Hillary. We agree that Hillary won a um, uh, popular populist. vote. Yeah, mm -hmm. we agree that she won it. But Trump still had young people supporting him, even currently. Uh, about 46 or the last time i saw it was 46 45 he's ahead of he was ahead of uh, uh the current president in terms of uh entering the white house right so populism is changing the dynamic of politics in the entire world and we have to be careful one of them is also prince uh, senator prince johnson senator prince johnson uh just gained our popularity because of his past because the number of people believe in him and they see him as a messiah so populism is changing the, uh, the political dynamic that is why crowd politics is very important because populist leaders tend to have crowds and anywhere they show up people will just go to see them because of their personality and they are giving in fact now political science scientists are still telling how they can really uh, track these guys down how they can overpower them how populism will get over so never overlook crowd delon delon is another populist leader who got elected in most around the country senator delon won the two elections because of what his advocacy so we we, we, we uh, if i'm asked to do a case study of a populist leader i will get delon and I will give you reasons why he is a populist leader because of his quote unquote advocacy against bad governance, then and even up the present. That is why they don't want, and several of them won this going time because of that. Only Joe Barker, President Joe Barker, won as a typical politician. Yeah, so <laughs> you gotta be careful. The person who will always put out the highest crowd in elections, most are populist. Candidates. So, so, so I want let, let's dif distinguish between crowd politics and the populist leader. Okay, okay. I think the, a distinction between those. Yeah, the distinction here, uh -huh. populist leaders, like I said, populist leaders are leaders or candidates who, because of their past, that is, uh, either they were celebrities before getting into politics. That is a soccer player, example, George Madden Weir. He played football. Many people, including me, in 2005, when I was just 15 years old, in a refugee camp, when President George Madden Weir, then Kennedy, uh, when he arrived in a displaced camp, I left what I was doing for my grandmother just to go and see George Weir. Why? Because I heard his name when I was growing up, and I, I needed an opportunity to see him. And that extended up to 2020, uh, uh, 2017. We still saw young people who went to George Weir just because of his uh, celebrity status. That is a, a populist leader. Another populist leader may be ah, uh, ah Hussein because he is an activist who will come and say, Joe Barker is not doing this, his administration is this, this is how government should be. Many people in the community will tend to love. I will say because of that is thing. And anywhere, so, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead when you're done. Yeah. I'll, I'll anywhere I will say is going to show up. There are people who will say this this man is this man is uh the moth piece for us. Another good example of a populist dealer in Liberia is Representative Yeke Koluba. He is a populist representative. So those are people because of their advocacy, their political uh how you call it, their uh, stardom or Anything they are, whether uh, humanitarian or whatever activities they are involved into, they are not typical politicians, but because of advocacy or certain things they were doing when they get into politics, they tend to overshadow the, uh, the typical politicians. And whenever they speak, people believe in them. But the sad part about them, they don't know how to run governments. 
Great. That's a the good sad part of populist leaders. They don't know. You just made the best yes. remark about yeah, my why I, of them don't know. You just kind of made my case about why mm -hmm. I think that Liberia is currently not in a position to promote crowd politics or populist uh, populist politicians. Okay. Yeah. Uh we are not in a position to do that. In in America, you can elect a popular leader, you know, like yeah, Trump won as a populist. Trump. Yes, Donald Trump, even though he won the electoral college vote, but he didn't win the popular vote. Um, he, he was a popular uh, politician because of his, you know, radio personality and TV personality. But you're right. He did not know how to run government, number one. Yeah. And um, he he also uh, was a blunt. He was a one-term president. You know, he, he blundered the American system. Now, yes. he worked in the United States because we have an established system in the United States. The system has existed for more than 200 years. It works. You know, for the most part, it works. Not all the time. And so when a, a, a president or a leader, you, you, you don't really have to do much, honestly. Where Liberia is right now, crowd politics, populist leader, you really have to work hard. Crowd politics and with our competency of meritocracy will not work in Liberia because we are so behind. We are, back, we are behind, behind, behind. Yeah, but this, this is not what Liberia is so, like well, taking I, I, over. I, I, yeah, you're right. When you're talking yeah. nationally, you're right. But even to some extent, uh, nationalists, you, your point is that, you know, Donald Trump, a national leader, didn't do much to Liberian politics, to American politics. He didn't add one, one iota <laughs> positive uh, bill, one iota positive uh, like mantra for the American people to carry on. It's not like, for example, his, his, his predecessor, Barack Obama, affordable health care from uh, Obamacare. People can identify with that because Obama worked his butt off to pass that. Okay? There are others that came before. You know, when we talk about other presidents have something to show for. But what is Trump, what does he have to show for? Is that, what, what he's known for right now is his legal cases. And I don't want to spend our precious like green time talking about in the American politics. But I'm saying that and, and welcome, Party God. I'm saying that crowd politics right now is not needed in Liberia. To me, I will not, I don't even appreciate it being in Liberia. It's been there. I can give you a cup of rice. I can give King Juice. I can bring music, my music outside, and I can call my name, and everybody will come. Okay. But at the end of the day, have I provided civic education? Have I provided you the right, the right message? Okay, that will move Liberia over. That will put Liberia on the world stage. No, I have not seen that. Usually, populist leaders they are anti-establishment. By the way, the politics. My, my, when I go to my, my, my politics gear, yeah, establishment. They they connect with the followers. Okay, yeah. basically, but, they, they they describe themselves as a patriotic. Uh, how you call it? Nationalistic leaders. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. They are not yes. patriotic. Yeah, yes. go ahead. So, and, and the, the, the catch is, if you are anti-establishment, if somebody in Liberia say, if you say Dylan or Yeke, if they are, they are anti-establishment, then Liberia should be in a better place right now. Because then we shouldn't have a budget that looks like the last budget. Then we shouldn't have sterling in our country when people are traveling. Then they, 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 they I don't even get into the drug system. The drug law should be changed like this. The drug behavior in Liberia should be changed like this. Anyway, I'll stop here. And Father God, I want to welcome you to the show. In fact, I want to welcome. We just got you. Just, you guys just caught up in the middle of of, of 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 discussion. I want to welcome all of you who are watching uh, to Spoon Talk, your, your radio station, your your show. Um, to, on Monday, just a quick announcement: we're going to have John Molu on the show. Uh, we'll begin the show and have others joining us. It's great to have Jeans Good Day here as well and Father God. So. I want to ask you guys your, just to give us your thought, your opinion, anything on your mind right now. I have a lot of things on my mind after today. I'm just ready to fight today. <laughs> I know I have a lot. Uh, but uh, that, sadly, uh, populist politics is not unique to like Even in America, populist politics is not going away, you know, anytime soon, yeah. especially in Liberia. It works. Uh, look, the, the thing here is, the simple definition I would say of a populist uh, 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 
politics is that people that they're just charismatic individuals that uh, uh, that speak to the heart and minds of the people, they speak on issues that matter to the people. It doesn't mean that they will necessarily do it uh, or everything they will do it, but these are people that speak to the conscience of the nation. Uh, they tend to emphasize on issues that bound people, um, you know, they make direct appeal to the public. Uh, they are anti-establishment, anti elitism uh, They find they simplify solution and make it look as if you say they have all the answers. You know, uh, they speak about national identity. That what we have, we saw we 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 we. we Donald Trump, you know, he brought up the, the, the America. So it's the same thing. Everybody wants someone that uh, can identify with them. And I think the CDC did that very well. If anybody that did it, the CDC mastered the act of pot. But here's where those guys went wrong. It's easy to, to talk about the problem and then find a solution. Uh, 2017, the librarian people bought into the message and gave them an opportunity. Uh, after after uh, six years, they realized that uh, it it doesn't just take speech and empty rhetoric. Uh, you have to actually do something. And when they came to power, the governance process was just not uh, their strong suit. Uh, they made a lot of mistakes. Um, it was just hard, you know, and the only way they, they just cornered themselves and decided to build this court uh, that in, 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 in divided the country straight. So, and we saw the end result. So, populist politics is not going anywhere. But uh, what I really wanted to talk about today, so that, that's my take on populist politics. It's not going anywhere, it's not unique to Liberia. It's a very good strategy, uh, but uh, sometimes it has to be matched by some action. And, and, and we didn't see that. But uh, that that so many things happening. The issue with drugs in Liberia. I do not believe that our leaders understand the drug problem in this country. I don't think the Liberian people actually understand yet, besides seeing Zogos uh, 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 challenge people who left for the Zogos, challenge youth, uh, addicts, uh, people, and something. Drugs is more prevalent in Liberia than people think. It's a serious problem. The next thing that I that that that, that was on my mind was um, the pimping riders. I know there were demonstration and protest. There needs to be a solution. There are so many things that we can do. Uh, stopping them is not the only way. Um, Preventing them from using certain routes, it can solve some of the problem, especially at night, restricting their night, where there's violent crime associated with those guys. But I think public safety will naturally solve this problem. The police and the, the, the Ministry of Transport need to be very vigilant and enforce our public safety law. It will disabuse some people's mind. It will, it will dissuade some people to get away from that industry. Not that anybody want people to do, but if you have something, I know it's easy for us to say, oh, people making money. How your people will feed and say, government need to find job. I'll hear it. But if, look, roads or uh, uh, accidental death from motor vehicle or operating, any kind of, is the leading cause of death in life. Between 2020, uh, uh, 2018 to now, almost 30, uh, the last statistic that I read, 39.7 out of every 100 thousand people die from motorcycle accident or some uh, uh, moving vehicle related death. Accident kill more people in Liberia than even diseases. People die, these are preventable things. These are things that we have control over. We can control how many people die on our road. I mean, how many times Jen Louis see take people in a truck die? 20 people. Who, we, we, we're not even plenty. And then people dying at this kind of rate. You go, you see 
this other amount of people. One Liberian is not supposed to not die from, from accident, things that we have control over. But because they decide not to enforce the law, these things are happening. The reason we have government is to protect the citizen from themselves, is to protect all of us. So I think public safety, restricting the number of people on, on a bike, making sure that people wearing helmets. Give some now. Nice. You know, yeah. Yeah, but all them men ain't kind of that. We'll say, Gabriel, making okay. sure that. Well, well, because, I got to do my opening. Good day, yeah, I got to do my opening. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, I'll be very fast with it. And, and all those things so that that, that will help uh, 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 minimize some of those things. But I just sick and tired of seeing young people dying. And I would have talked about the fire, but I'll probably explain on that too. So, those are the three things that are on my mind. You know, okay. uh, Father God, thank you so much. Um, just to let you know, next week or in the near future, we're going to have the Rural Safety Action International uh, come on and speak to us about some of the things that you're talking about, you know, the, the, the percentage of death in the country and and why it is uh, in relation to our road safety uh, measures that we have in the country. So they're going to come and talk to us, and that would be a great place for you to add your voice as well. Um, before I say what I have to say, good day. You have you want to add to, to? Do you have any any thoughts that you want to add to? Yes. Uh, let me just add up to what uh, Fariga talked about. Right. Uh, let's put things to where they belong. Most of the motor accidents that are taking place in Liberia, you know, who is responsible or which ministry is responsible is the Ministry of Transport. Why? Because people in Liberia, if you think I'm lying, Fadiga, you already have a uh, driver lesson. I'm very sure you have international driver lesson. But pocket that, go to the Ministry of Transport and say you want to uh, get a driver lesson. They're not going to give you good tests. They're not going to examine you to know whether you are qualified. Fadiga in Liberia, I drove for two years. I had my own cars for two years. The first car had problem. The CEO got me another one, which I left in Liberia when I was coming. Who got the car with? <laughs> Different to people another day. <laughs> <laughs> I in this people country. I keep in this people country, right? Up to now, I am not qualified to drive. Why? Because I am yet to pass uh, the, the theoretical test. Do we have a theoretical test in Liberia? Do we have a practical test in Liberia? No. If we can just take driver lesson and just give it to any Tom and Harry and tell them you are qualified, you think that person is not going to uh, damage people's life in the street? They will. Cross war in Liberia. I dare you fighting out tomorrow, put your camera on, tell somebody to do it. Go to the cross war where there's no light. Put your put your one foot on, on, on that line and see if drivers will stop. Oh, I, I just posted on my wall here about two days ago. The easy way to get killed is on a crosswalk. <laughs> Honestly, the, you know the you know how you, the, the first car will stop, the next car that coming from the other side will hit you. Yeah, not like they don't want to stop, but they don't have idea to what it is. They don't have. Uh, they are not knowledgeable they don't know about what a crosswalk is. And who can teach them? Is the Ministry of Transport that, that that has that ability to teach them? Uh, about 90 percent or 95 percent of the drivers in Liberia ask them and say if you are driving you see a pedestrian put their uh, on the crosswalk what you have to do if they if they give you good answer fatiga let me be 95 percent of Liberian drivers the five percent are people who travel out of Liberia and they are currently in Liberia these are people who know about that in fact when you do it even when I was in Liberia I never knew about that yeah. Yeah. I just used to drive. I see you there. I say, my man, you you guys, you guys uh, love because the, because the pressing because the pressing for coming to the crosswalk. Yes, this is the this is the the sad reality in Liberia. Even 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 senators, representatives, they don't know. No, good day. Make a good point. You know, they don't know. Recently, and how can these people know these things? We have to put the system in place before you get a driver lesson. You should go through it in Poland. There is. There is an individual in Poland who has been doing this test for 19 good years. Since his lifetime, he never passed. 
and they, they have never given him driver lesson. Before you, you you get car or you, you drive here, you must pass that test. Since 2022, uh, when I entered here, in 2023, I, start, I did that test two times. This year, I did it two times. No way. Why? Simple, simple questions. You have to pass the theoretical before the take for first road test. We don't have it. So yeah. people will continue to die in Liberia until we have a system where if one person is to get a driver lesson, your brain should know all, almost all of the traveling rules. So yeah. Yeah. No, you make you make you make excellent points, uh, good day. Um, you know, in this country we have to do a theoretical and practical test. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, like Father Guy said, he failed his first uh, practical test. I believe it was a practical test, right? Yeah, the one, the one that we, I had to go drive. Like go out into the road. Yes. So yeah. in this country, uh, you know, I, I got my license in New York, and in order to get your license, you have to take a special class as a as a you know sixteen year old, seventeen year old. They, they offer it in school. You have to take driver. They practice practice on the road before you go for your theoretical test and before your theoretical test is knowing the road signs knowing you know the speed uh the the the, the speed in which you need to drive the speed limit for different places uh you know how to take a curve and all of those things there's so many questions that fire hydrant how many um, feet you need to park away from a fire you hydrant. need to know them yes you need to know all of those things and then they put you in a car with an instructor from the state because it's, yeah. it's from the state that you have to go in the street and drive that guy will be testing you, looking at you, looking at your every move. Okay, <laughs> thank God it's one of those cars that have two pedals because, uh, from what I understand, I mean, I have four daughters, all of them pass the driving test. But thank God for that other pedal there that they have that they can control. Otherwise, they are going to have some serious accidents themselves. So yes, they, they, there's a need, and you're right. The, the department, the Ministry of Transportation, is the person in charge, and it's a simple fix, very easy fix. Okay, yeah, it does not require. Uh, you know, uh, any kind of significant knowledge to to to, to impose or to implement driver testing. In, in there are so people that that like like that can drive, but they are uneducated. There are other tests that they can take to. Yes. Yes. People, and, yes. And, 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 and they can be accommodated as well. No. Yes. Uh, I have I have lots of clients who have to go take the test, and they are accommodated. They have they either tell them they they test in their language. Okay, yeah. so they have like people who will speak the dialect to them and they answer the written test, you know, verbally or orally, but they know how to drive. So that's true. The, the, the problem with that is there's all the signs in the United States are in English. So they, if they're driving locally and know where they're going, that's fine. But you get on the highway, you see the sign that says New York, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, the Connecticut. Why well, you do that? That often. Go put that thing in Liberia. You see how drivers will be going to Banga instead of bombing. That that's <laughs> it. That's it. There. That's it. But I, I wanted to tell you that when in in Liberia, my husband likes to drive himself when he's in Liberia. He feels safe that way. Even though, uh, sometimes we will, we we do have uh, somebody assigned to us to help us drive. So my husband will stop at the crosswalk, put his hard light on his his four wheel blinker. It's almost like we're looking to die when we do that. Because you never know whether you're going to get hit from your back, from your side, for stopping for somebody. Because this is something that we're accustomed to at the crosswalk. You have to stop. And so, yeah. yes, uh, you make some really great points. Both yeah, like people. somebody is telling me to get a, the, uh, the steady car, right? You see the steady car, how many percent are going to? 60 <laughs> uh, is 65%. So, like, I did the steady car 65%, but the issue is it's in Polish. And if they are to translate in English, it's also going to take you some time, right? So yeah, it's right. like difficult. And trust me, if we have a leader or a minister of uh, transport who will put in this system that beginning now, before you get a travel lesson, these are the steps that you have to follow. Mm -hmm. Accident will reduce because you're also going to know about road safety. This, this steady guy. This steady guy, oh, I have the book here, uh, and prepare, you know, notes, prepare yes. notes and give them to these That's people exactly before you do the test. Okay. Huh? Our children take yeah. that course. Give it to them. Let, them, let them, let them, in school. It. Because it has rules. That's a class. That's an elective in school. Before they turn 16, they get their driver's license or permit here. 
So they yeah, have to have a uh, Let me tell you my, my oh, uno. It's so far. It will help Let us. me tell you my fun. Mm -hmm. My daughter uh, should be 16 this year. Mm -hmm. This woman called me to tell me, Daddy, I, I got my permit now. I got my permit now. Yeah, I'm going to be driving myself to school. I'm, yes. like, I, I'm like, woman, <laughs> you, you're not driving yourself to school. <laughs> Imagine that, yes. that looking. Your yeah, insurance school. will go up. Let me just say, all your parents, oh, our insurance got four daughters. I didn't, even daughters. Listen, I didn't even listen to what you were talking about. You come here, Gory. I'm like, yeah, right. You will drive. Yeah. And she said, oh, daddy, I'm going to drive myself. I said, which for That is a rite of passage. You cannot deny her that funny guy. I can't got kind of to drive myself. That I found something on online today. I was doing research. I was thinking, I'm like, you know what? We keep talking about this thing. We need solution. Uh, what if we do some public safety thing that would teach road safety, put more signs on the road, or uh, uh, even if we have to have people at those crosswalk, like city police could do that work. One person with all the light that will be stopping at every crosswalk, that work. Two people, two shifts, that, that, you know. And and I went, I found a secretariat within the Ministry of Transport that does road safety, road safety secretariat or something that was established at 2018. Poor me went on the website. No report, nothing. The website, I was so freaking angry when I went on that website and say, Are you kidding and then me? Say, nothing. No, I went to report nothing. Since 2022, they have not updated the website. That's a problem. That Since is a problem. 2022, some road safety secretary. I'm like, but then why do they? I, I didn't even know. I was so frustrated. I left from there. I started to do something, but we. We need to do something about this thing. People are dying, and we have control over those deaths. We are preventing it, but it's sad, though. Yeah, it's it's sad. It's sad, and we can only solve it. And uh, we can only solve it when we put in the right system. We have people who are knowledgeable about these things, and you, you cannot entrust your life with 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 a person who did not follow any procedure and just got beyond staring. Like in Liberia, I started driving. I spent like I spent less than a week, and I, I was I, I was okay to drive, but I did not know all of the sound. And in Liberia, one thing again, and maybe this is because people are now going through the right procedure. There are you, you cannot see many road signs. No, look, yes. you know the one that the frustrating part. I almost hit one pimping rattle, and and you have to quickly. Put on, put off your Western cap and start taking the library to save life. Yeah, you see two yellow line. It means no pass zone. That is exactly oh. where these people will pass. People, don't I have see people that overtaking on the left side of the road. Can you imagine? I put on my signal light, and the next thing, zoom the paper rattle, zoom on the left where they have the two. I'm like, I almost. In fact, one of them hit my car. Yeah, and, and there's nothing that come out of it. Nothing comes out of it. To hit if the I don't start insulting you, telling you that uh, you, people you, overtake you, that that you that see no you somehow. Yes. So you know, um, there's so, and, and this is profit making for our country as well. Uh, before my children get the permit, we have to pay. We also have to pay another. Uh, they have to get a decor. That says that they are learners, so we have to put that on the card. That's the seller. hundred and I don't know, almost four hundred dollars I pay for yes. my daughter class to you go see? to that to that class. Then, yeah, that's just in the school will give them. Yeah, just a school. But in my case, we also had to pay triple A. Triple A is a private entity in this country that again making business. You know, talking about prioritization, um, but that my daughters had to go to. To get a special discount, okay, and to get a special drought that would take it on the road because we we didn't have the time to do it. And then after that, this is they have to get a permit for two years. After that, we gotta pay more money. We gotta pay money for the permit. Then after that, we gotta pay more money for them to get a license. All of that, there's an insurance cost to all of this. We're talking about money now, okay? Prioritization. How can the state and other people make money in our country? For four children, my insurance has skyrocketed. I think I'm paying like $800 or $900 a month on insurance, okay, including my husband, myself. So, and then, of course, it encourages us to purchase cars if you want to. But all of these things, you know, that money making, 
a business for the government, especially when it comes to issuing a, a, a license, license plates, uh, some kind of decor for the car to indicate that that this driver is in training. But you know, we, we don't have any of those those things. But um, to to transition a little bit from what you're talking about today, good day in, in Fadiga, women issues as usual is always on my mind. I don't know. I know you guys might not be excited about this topic, but there's two things. Yeah, yeah, there's two things that's on my mind. The Jessica Lloyd case. Jessica will be coming as soon as she feels better. She and her mother will come here for her to tell her story. Um, it I, I was happy to, to hear that my mom uh, Briggs Mensa, uh, she's in the House of Representatives. She actually has been championing this case to bring some awareness to how our lawyers and our judges decide cases when it comes to women. Women are the bedrock for Liberia society and for society, for all society for that matter. If we, be, we continue to treat our women like they have no value, we want to talk to them anyway, we want to you know, treat them as like second class citizen, we want to discriminate against them, our society will not go anywhere. And I, it, this, is, this is part of our struggle. This is part of our struggle for our society. It's the way that we, we treat women. This man came to our country, Lucas Richard. The man came to spread Christianity as they have done since 19 hoo hoo. When you come to spread Christianity, then you, you don't get married to a young girl. You don't ask for a second wife. You don't even, <laughs> you don't even, Christianity and our tradition of having second wives, there are two different things. That's why we have two, two constitutions, two laws. You know, you can either marry constitutionally or you can marry traditionally in the country. And here it is. I don't know if his wife was aware that he he told Jessica that his that his wife could not bear a child for him. So that's why he wanted to marry Jessica so Jessica can have his child. And somehow the light went off in his head. Like, dude, you know, this is not according to Christianity. You have a wife. How can you be having a wife in America and have a child? I don't know what, what went off in his head. But it is my understanding that he injected Jessica with something, some chemical, for lack of a better word, that allowed her to lose the baby uh, shortly thereafter. And it was during Jessica's kind of moments when she wasn't feeling right. She wasn't feeling good. It is my understanding he asked her to go for a ride. And, you know, and during that time, there was different, uh, 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 like, conniving that he did to her. You know, I understand that, you know, a couple of times he asked her to stop and she didn't feel like it because of the situation and the, and, and the location. But he succeeded one last time where he was able to hit her with an object on her head, causing her to almost like lose consciousness. And then he, at that time, somebody saw him cutting her throat. Now, people have argued like, oh, Jessica said in the court system that she, she didn't realize that her, her, her throat was being cut. I want to ask you guys who are here with me in the, the audience. Sometimes have you not been in an accident in a state of shock that then you, somebody tell you, say, my man, you're bleeding? Or you, 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 know, you know where you are? This can happen. All right? So that was one of the reasons why they said that Jessica's story did not make sense because she didn't say that, um, you know, she was being cut by this man. She didn't really, she wasn't clear on that. Another part was to say they couldn't find a weapon. There's so many cases, if you check, research this, that have been won where the weapon has never been found. A third part of the story is that Jessica protected Richard Lucas or Lucas Richard from the Pen Pen Boys. My goodness, this man told Jessica that he liked her, he loved her, he cared about her. When she saw the Pen Pen driver, it's, in a cost, it's just sort of automatic that you want to protect because she didn't even know what was going on around her. And I wish that our court would begin to utilize the knowledge and skills, the practice of experts. This woman is traumatized. She continues to be traumatized. There's a crime of, you know, of passion. She was, she, she's in love with this young girl. I, I, infatuation is that's what I would call it. Not even in love because she's still, she's still young. And so now our court system acquitted this man and immediately, from what I gather, he left the country. How are we treating our women? 
how if you are the lawyer and you we understand that the money exchange hands in that case that could have been your daughter you are just perpetuating how worthless we should treat our women if you took money in exchange of justice for jessica so that's my first my first thought my second thought is we are hearing that in some senate bush i know this is a sensitive situation i don't want to really expand it until i get full information but i mean people can come at me but i will tell you when you take someone uh who did not volunteer to have to be to be second size or their their, 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 their female parts mutilated they didn't volunteer for that okay they were young to me i'm against that if you tell me you're taking somebody who volunteer 18 19 year old raise their hand up consent to having this practice done to them fine but we are hearing that this practice was were done in the, the movie that like this Liberian guy became popular Atos, i believe that's his name good day I, I think he became very Atos. Atos. Frank yeah. Atos. similar situation is happening in our country right now it is my understanding that a woman just died under this practice in a zoo is in uh 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 under uh, police custody because they took almost a 25 year old woman kidnapped her and mutilated her where she probably died okay and a, a lot of times people can die because there's lack of antibiotic in our country especially if they use a razor blade that was you know used with other people or use a bottle knife all of these things i'm sorry that i'm getting very vivid but i want to drive the point home we cannot keep treating our women like this and expect to have a better society we cannot we cannot keep accepting money in exchange for justice for our women because we saw a white man or because we think that a white man is better than a Liberian man. And we cannot keep allowing, yes, the Senate Bush is great, I like it. I have family members who went into it. It teaches women great skills, communication skills, the dancing, the fun, the cooking, if that, yes. But when you get into cutting a woman, mutilating a woman's private part, we are getting to different biological and psychological and social territory. As a psychologist, you can't believe how many women I see on a maybe monthly basis that tell me that they have no sensation because at age 10, 6, somebody dragged them. A family member made a decision for them to be to go to, to get their, 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 their part mutilated. So as a result, as, 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 as an adult, they can't, they have no feeling. Uh, being intimate is like fighting for them in order for them to have sensation. It's like somebody got to be forcing them. You got to be fighting with them. That's the only way sometimes they can feel. And I I, I I, think I said this on the show before. I like to describe it to, you know, when you're a drug dealer, the first time you, you use cocaine, you get very high. You get enjoy. But as the more you keep on using cocaine, your body gets immune to it. So you always chasing your first high. And that's what I find I can describe. This. It's almost like they always want that gratification because they can't get it. Number two, some of them have told me when they have babies in this country, in developed part of the country, they're like a specimen. The entire uh, gynecology department come and look at them because their body part is different from the rest of the other women that have been seen. So I would like to say here today, I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm not opposed to the Senate Bush. I'm not. If, if some women have some great skills, they learn some great things, great. But please allow women to be able to consent to some of the practices like female genital circumcision that happens there. So that's all I have to say. That's one of the things. But this story is a developing story. Uh, the story of this young woman died in the Senate bush. The story of the zoo under custody of uh, the police department it is a developing story. It will bring you more of it. So thank you. Welcome, uh, Mr. Tualu. So that's what I have on my mind, um, Mr. Tualu. If, if you guys have any reaction to what I have to say, that's fine. But I wanted to say something about that case. Uh, Dr. Richardson, uh, Dualu, what's up? 
Oh, uh, look, there can be conviction with all murder rep weapon. There are so many things that could be that can be used. Uh, is this going to be one of the topics we're going to talk about today? Sure. We 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 uh, we free flowing today. We don't have a lot to talk about. Yeah, uh, if we're going to talk about it, uh, maybe Dwalu. All right, I'll just continue. Look, there are so many ways that 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 you can you can you could have obtained a conviction. Um, with a murder weapon, uh, Liberia will barely talk about forensic evidence being uh, adduced uh, uh, in, in in most of our cases. But even eyewitness te 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 uh, uh, testimony, uh, confession, or incriminating statement, like some of the statement that that guy made, you can use circumstantial evidence where the, the, the court can draw inference from, from certain things. You know, from like the, the murdering of a, a child, the abortion. Video behavior. There were a lot of people that tested, uh, testified, pimping riders. There were a lot of compelling evidence. But Doc, this is what I have observed. You know, the last three months I've been on the ground. I've been poking around, doing a lot of trying to relearn this country. And, you know, so sometimes when I say this way, America, oh, I'm like, no, because one of the things we're talking about is George. You know, and, and I spoke with, with representing the breach the other time. And I was telling you, Nelson, a Nelson China. Yeah, and we, 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 we just Nelson. It may not even be George Nelson. George Nelson may have even been applying the law. This is how things get broken down in Liberia. The corruption doesn't only start from there. The corruption in, 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 in tempering with the case stuff on the meaning of arrest. I have seen incidents multiple times that even the police, I told the representative, I said, you guys need to go to the police. The, the evidence, the charges, these guys were wrongfully charged people knowing that the, the, the person uh, to create, create uh, leave wiggle room for people to, to be uh, acquitted or to go free. So corruption in this country, when it comes to this thing, uh, it, it's not a one-man thing. I've seen people brought the charge sheet. How can someone slap you uh, 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 and the person fall down and then you say, oh, you know what? I charge you with murder one. Or uh, someone involved in a motor car accident and, 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 and two car collided. I mean, there's a way, uh, there's a story. But you can clearly see that it was not premeditated at all. Or non premeditated or something, and then you say, you know what, I'll charge you with, with murder one, knowing that for the way that you cannot prove it beyond reasonable doubt. So they will write these 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 charges in a way that, and even the way they will present the case, they will leave a lot of loopholes. I've seen it to echo. I'm, I'm like, wow. And they know about it. So when it go there, if a judge see it and you say, you know what, there's not enough evidence, there's nothing going on. You know what? I will quit. So right now you're blaming the judge, but that judge may have used the law. The law is the law. So I told her, like, you know what? We should not only look at the judge. It's not impossible. The judge is here to do it. They are as writing some of them. I won't say all of them. Or a lot of them are writing uh, 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 too. But we should not only blame. We should follow the trail. Go back to the day of arrest because this thing play all on social media. We saw the first video when when it, when the guy tried when it, when it, when it, when they were passing around social media. We saw this guy giving uh, interview, uh, and, and and there were enough evidence, circumstantial though, that to 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 blame this on this guy. But there were eyewitnesses. There were people that came around. And, you know, some of them even protected the mob from from lynching this guy or beating him. So how this guy uh, 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 got away? It may be one or two things. The police either did a sloppy job or the judge or the family member or somebody. But and look, in America, it doesn't matter whether the family member take bribe or anything. These kind of cases become state-owned cases. You cannot defeat the state. If the family don't want to press charges, the state will press charges and subpoena the family to testify or whoever in the case. So there is no way you can say, oh, you know what? <laughs> I don't want to press charges again. I want to leave it. Once it become a state-owned case, uh, 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 the state prosecuted that case, you don't have no option. What are you saying? You're not press charge. So long the government sees that somebody will try to coordinate and that person is there, we will prosecute that person. And if you do not want to testify, they will subpoena you to testify. The highest is done in the U.S. 
Yeah. Hey, look, it is. You guys were talking about the traffic. I was sitting in traffic. It took me close to two hours to drive from from around Google Factory into the studio. Everybody got 15 lanes. Nobody follows the traffic rule. Uh, it's, it's just crazy. So I was just in the car laughing. I'm going, oh my God, they're talking about traffic. Everybody takes the opposite lane. But with the issue of Jessica, Dr. Prime saying, uh, uh, Padika got this right. <clears throat> Sometimes, you know, it is okay to talk, but the way charges are drawn up, uh, we let the person go scar free. I mean, this is why the police has to be properly trained. And they will compound the charges. They will charge him with maybe kidnapping. They will attach another charge, another charge to make sure one of them stick. You can't just charge him. Say, um, uh, manslaughter. I'm not manslaughter, but first degree murder. When you could possibly do manslaughter or you could possibly do second degree murder or something that will convict him of. At the end of the day, if we do not get it right, we will continue to suffer, my people. Getting it right is not an option. It is a necessity for survival. Let me repeat. Getting it right is not an option. It is a necessity for survival. If this country is really going to grow and be modernized, we have to get it right. We have to follow the guidelines. We have to set standards. Those standards have to be followed. We have irrespective of who fall in the dragnet. If Dwalu goes and steal somewhere, and the law says Dwalu is convicted of theft. Dwalu does three years in jail. It doesn't matter what position I hold. You have to hold Dwalu to account. The reason is, it's not what Dwalu has done. It's to discourage the act that has happened so it cannot happen in the future. Mr. Jackson, welcome to the show, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah, okay. I've been listening to you guys, and um, it's just like, oh, my God, it's so... I'm not going to say worrisome. It is really, it's tragic. Liberia is a tragic country, eh? really tragic. Eh? When something like Lucas getting away with uh, attempted murder, and if they can't find the murder, they can't find the uh, weapon that was used, but there were, were, there were no, there were no lacerations on her throat. You know, there were not. So, you know, I mean, like I've been a victim of the Liberian court system. I, I had a gas station. <laughs> And I invested quite a bit of money, almost two hundred thousand dollars, plus uh, some money. What they call it, tend to put in the bank to secure the uh, total people. Every week, I was losing money. Let me tell you how to do it, Dwalo. I would buy like ten thousand gallons on the weekend. They bring the truck. Cause so I'm not there. This I'm a financial investor, and I total train the people, put them there. And they will bring 10,000 gallons. The retail manager and the supervisor will sign for 10,000 gallons. They'll put only 3,000 gallons in the tank. I busted the ring. I had recordings. I had my documentation. Took them to court. Every single uh, documentation and evidence I give to the county attorney office disappeared. Disappeared. I lost $180,000 there. I mean, if, if it can happen to somebody like me, yeah, like me, right? So what do you think? And every single business that I had in Liberia, because I'm an, I'm an absentee owner, I mean, I do my hustle, put people there to run it. My ice factory to my house on, uh, what the place needs to have, uh, Pinsville Joe Bar. One of the managers, was giving the ice to all the, 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 the bars around there and, 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 and drinking and drinking week, weekly, you know? There's nothing that you can do. Listen, the reason why Liberia is, is in the state is there's no rule of law, accountability. When people lie, they cheat, they steal, and they get away with it, and in many, many cases, they get upgraded to... So the positions of authority, and we know these people, we know what they did. You can't, you can't run a country. People ask you, so okay, how come America not investing in Liberia? The risk profile is too high. The, the court system, eh? you, you cannot, you, you can't do a business, run, run a McDonald's in, 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 in Liberia or Burger King or something, where they will not steal everything that you got. And then we wonder how come Royal Hotel have Filipino pistol sellers, all the 
PP businesses in Liberia not have any Liberian accountants, social Indian accountants. Yeah. Social Indian accountants. Mr. Yeah. Jackson, I mean. Yes. I want to buy, I want to buy a keke one day. I'll tell you, and I will I will tell you what you guys. I want to buy a keke one day to the place right there in Vatan. I took my three thousand dollars cash. You know who came to receive the money? Indian guy came to receive the money. You know who came to count the money? An Indian woman. And there were librarians that were working in the store. I mean, something as simple as receiving cash and counting the cash you have to give it to Indians, something is mightily wrong with Liberia. And Dwalo, it is your generation I can fix it. It's your generation I can fix it. Mr. And, Jackson. And, and, and Fariga, like your generation, and good like your generation. And if you keep making excuses for people that are in power, and you say you're giving them time, you're giving them time, there has to be a radical approach to the development of Liberia. And no matter who is hurt, you got to start the process now. Right. Mr. Jackson, I couldn't agree more. The process has to start. People, look, the issue of discipline in this country, it cannot be something we just talk about. It cannot be something that you've spoken about, Fatiga. I mean, our generation has a great task and we cannot run away from that task. That task has to be addressed. Look, some of us never got interested in politics ever. But we must get interested in politics. I don't know who said this. I think it was Plato or Socrates, or maybe perhaps it was Seneca. He said, when men who know better, when men who are prepared better, refuse to partake in politics, they will be led by lesser men. This is what we've done in many instances. We stay on the fringes and say, listen, we don't want to spoil our name. And by the same token, our country is going in the gutter. Nothing is being done. You're talking about Indians coming to the country and counting money. Like LU is putting out thousands of accountants and business managers annually. AMB Zion University, Method University, are putting out these graduates here in our country. How are they supposed to hone their skills? How? From where? Fadiga. Perhaps maybe you have a better insight. Where are they supposed to get a job from to hone their skills? Fadiga, up to you, man. The lack of trust. Look. I'll give you this example. A couple of years ago, uh, I had uh, I was in Kona Creek. Uh, I had this apartment, and uh, this young man, and I, that's something I observe a lot of time. I know a lot of people will me on this. I was in this apartment. Uh, this man came to do work for me. And the difference that I saw between this country and other countries, especially most Islamic countries, these people are afraid. They believe in instant karma. This young man went in the room to do some work, had some money in the room, did his work. I overpaid him, but he didn't know that I added his transportation there. And I just saw the man standing up to the door. And I said, well, young man, why are you standing there? You should be leaving. He said, well, boss man, you gave me more money. I said, oh, no, it's, it's, it's for your, your, your transportation. But I've had, I had several people after that that came to do work at the house. I didn't have to be in the room. I was never there. They came, they just did the work that they're supposed to do and leave. In Liberia, there is something called a crime of opportunity. I don't know. I don't know. I don't I don't understand why people do that. You give people the opportunity as soon as they have one minute to rob you, they will rob you in this country. Rob you. And I'm like, why are people doing this? Thing? It doesn't mean poverty is not a reason. This never used to happen before. Either because of the war, I don't know what's the motivation behind it, but this is a very religious country, I will assume. But for people to behave like that, it's, it's sometimes, uh, you know, the Americans did something to, to, to cocktail this. And, 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 and it started very early on from nursery school. I didn't know this until I had my daughter and then you have to sit down and listen to all these different cartoons, what is that teaching about caring and sharing and patriotism at the very early age? Maybe, just maybe, it will start teaching honesty in school again. But how can you do that when the teachers are asking for grade and the teachers are dishonest? Those people, the road. So you see how how troubling it is. So the children start to get contaminated early. Look. I used to be watching the cartoon. I did not know that was why they had Care Bear 
in, in all these different, different things until I, I started to listen. So I said, oh, this is how they start teaching people how to be nationalistic and patriotic, that caring is good and sharing is good and all the things. But no, when you look at a, a success in Liberia, what does it look like? Look at successful people in Liberia. When you look at, so we need to reorientate our people. We need to change Valiga. a lot of people in the country. Hey, but first, let's start the show. Valiga. But you're the first topic here tonight. Um, before the guys get here, the the, the House of Representatives has decided to probe the judgment from Jessica's case. Um, do you think anything is going to happen? Are they just going to go in there talk about it to to pretend as though they're doing something, or? Is the House of Representatives truly going to do anything about this? Or is there anything they can do legally? Dr. Clinton. So um, I'm not as optimistic as I would like to be because there are several reports that, you know, the House of Representatives or the Senate were engaged in, and we tend to never see the results. Um, nevertheless, I think it's a good thing that they open a probe into this case. For the primary reason that it is my understanding that bribery, bribery occurred. Mm -hmm. And anywhere around the world, when you have a legal case and people bribe either the lawyer or the judge, it's an offense. Yeah. It's a, it, you can go to jail for that. Okay? That is an interference with justice. So if that is the case, I think we need to get to the bottom of it because, like, mm -hmm. like, like I believe Fadiga said, there was so many circumstantial evidence. There were so many things that we, we have account of the social media have documented those things. So for us to come today and say that, you know, this man was acquitted uh, 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 from the charges because we didn't have the weapon, they couldn't have uh, accurate account of the witness stories. It's not adding up to me at all. Huh. It is not adding up to me. So I am optimistic but not as optimistic as i want to be and i believe that the pro should not just be you know we're just giving people work to do they should actually have some substantial results such as if they find that bribery occurred or if they find that uh the lawyers did not uh follow the proper legal proceedings they should be punished i can tell you i was on another platform where jessica's mother was there she was immediately blowing the alarm saying that the lawyer for for Mr. Lucas Richard Rich, Lucas Richard's case, they were calling her and asking to bribe her. They wanted to give her ten thousand dollars for her to drop the case. That was what I believe she said while I was on another platform. She was there. She's expected to come. The only reason why she's not here today, or she wasn't here yesterday and won't be here until Monday or Tuesday, is because Jessica is not feeling well. She's she's undergoing extreme psychological problems as well as some. Uh, medical problems. Well, Fabi I mean, the same question to you. I don't know what a double job it is attached to this case. So legally, I don't think there's anything we can do. Uh, what's your response to the House of Representatives probing the issue? Uh, I, I had a lengthy conversation with uh, Representative Breach. Uh, she was very concerned and she seemed to hold this thing very dearly to her heart. Um, I don't know what we can do. What we can do is they can prevent this from happening. Uh, it is true, the double jeopardy law uh, 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 might apply. I'm not a lawyer, so I won't go into it. But they can, they, 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 I don't know whether uh, in this criminal case, whether there can be an appeal or something since this guy have left. But what I do think is we can either uh, 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 file a lawsuit or, 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 or how they call it thing, how they call it lawsuit, civil lawsuit in the United States uh, 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 you know, talk to the embassy, uh, see if we can gather more evidence to prosecute him using the U.S. law because even though he's U.S. citizen, he's still subject to, to, to those things. So, uh, we, we could do that, uh, because of the of the equator. So, those are the things. But as far as the legislature is concerned, I'm happy that they are they 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 have taken interest in this, it's not their duty. Uh, but because this thing, this case has, has gained national attention, uh, I've I think you're, you're, you're getting feedback from you. Because this case has gained national attention, I think it's the right, it's a step in the right direction. Let them probe, let them see where this thing coming from. Uh, or we need to give them more tip. I think they need to start up with the police, follow the trail from the, the arrest. 
to the charge sheet, to the, the prosecutor and see what went wrong. Because we should never have another Jessica in Liberia. This thing, okay. look, uh, 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 former Justice Scott was 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 sentenced for with all a murder weapon. Uh, I don't know how they did it, but she was sentenced in a case that uh, was circumstantial, and 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 she was convicted and, and thrown in prison. So uh, why this guy left, we will never know. We need a lawyer here, and we need to ask the family lawyer to see what really went on because I'm curious. But I think uh, we should have our lawmakers acting the, the, it's a step in the right direction. They need to find out what happened. Mr. Jackson, let, let that come to you, sir. Um, the issue, can we blame the judge in this case? Did the, the, the prosecution, not the prosecution, but the justice ministry, the, those that gather the evidence, are they making a mistake? Are we blaming the judge for no reason? Is there any justifiable reason why the judge should be blamed in this case, Mr. Jackson? Look, my brother, I mean, there's no court system in Liberia. There's no justice system in Liberia. Where, how do they pick jurors? Do you, have you ever asked yourselves how they pick jurors in Liberia? They have I no know. I got a, an idea on how. But, but, but let me tell you, but, but let me tell you, let me tell you, and this is a rhetorical question. They got professional jurors that there on every single case. The juror pool is contaminated. It is contaminated strictly by money and influence. The grand jury system that is seen people, okay? They're there in every single case, code A or code B or whatever, civil law, they, they're the same people, okay? How can you have a juror, a juror system where you're picking from the same contaminated pool for every single case? Professional jurors. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Jackson, uh, I don't want to cut you off, but I think it has changed though a little bit. Well, I just, yeah, let me finish. Let me finish. Okay. So just so, case they didn't have a juror, just to let you guys know. A juror. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. But this one was also the the the, the judge. Okay. The, this was what they call it in the the, the a judge. I think he, you can he had the option to choose jury. Or choose a judge. He chose a judge. The judge is from a contaminated pool. They don't rotate the judges. The same thing with a jury pool. They don't change a jury pool. So the first thing that any country needs to do, if it's serious about rebranding itself and attracting private sector money, is to fix the judicial system and. I don't know what the, the legislators are doing. I just don't trust them. And you know what I don't also trust too? I don't know what are the parents or family members of that Jessica girl. I'm not, I'm not casting as pressure on them because I have seen cases. Somebody killed somebody in Logan Town, one of my family members. And my family members then took money to throw the case out of, to throw the case out. So I'm not even sure. What are Jessica people? I'm not saying the and I'm not casting it, but I'm, I'm saying that is a probability in Liberia that they pay family members who are victims so they can harmonize cases in Liberia. It happens. Thank you. So until, 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 it, until a radical approach is made, it, we're not going to go anywhere, my brother. We're okay, we'll before I go to my brother Asivato, but Mr. Gude Flomo, can you charm me on this issue? Uh, yes, as per the questions first, the legislature or the House of Representatives, yes, they they are thinking in the right direction, but uh, let's, let's look at uh, allegations that are coming out. We got allegations that bravery took place. We listened to an audio where they are claiming that those who in our audio are lawyers, the first place to go if we really want to see a better system in our justice in our justice sector, the lawyers are on a one umbrella. That is the Liberal uh, Bar Association, right? I'm sure they have an ethic committee. But now, the Liberal Bar Association should have uh, issued a press statement saying 
based on the allegations that are in the public, we are investigating both lawyers, the both party lawyers, but now that you have been in the public, the bar association. And again, yes, some will blame the, the judge. Laws are not sentimental. Judges will sit and listen to you arguing your case. I argue my case with my lawyer based on facts that will be presented by my lawyer and your lawyer, the judge will decide. The law says it should be proven beyond all reasonable doubt. So if, I'm saying if it is real that bribery already took place, do you think Jessica lawyers were able to defend her to the letter? No. Do you think they were able to come forward to do whatever? No, because quote unquote, they took something in the back. So the Liberia Bar Association should first investigate all of the lawyers who were linked to the case. Thank you. Thank the, you. Fa the findings from there, we can go with it. And the judiciary uh, sector too should launch an investigation investigating the entire case. That is the judge, the lawyers investigating them to know what went wrong. Thank you, Mr. Goodyear. Mr. Goodyear will call for me. Yeah, nothing will come up. Mr. Flomo, I mean, Mr. Tupac, so, sir. Yeah, so um, I will take Flomo and then they. <laughs> no, just teasing. <laughs> um, so, look, our country is. There's so many things that messed up. And we know the judicial system is one of the major things and major areas where we need reform. Definitely, the legislature should look at you know judicial misconduct or allegations of judicial misconduct in this case and and really investigate but it is a knee-jerk investigation are they really serious about reform are they themselves clean enough and totally removed from this case that they can actually look at it objectively and do the kind of um you know investigation that's required a hard questioning um really putting people um uh, you know on the wall so i'm for it but i just wonder if it's just another useless exercise or if we get a true benefit that from it they can say oh you know what we really need this reform let's push and see how we can get this reform and just to uh, a good this point the labyrinth by association should actually have you know Call something to order at this point, and even the court itself, the higher court to whatever to that court, they should be considering this because there's audio to somebody discussing potential bribery. Who those voices are, we probably need experts to identify them or people who are close to those people in the case to identify them. But there's something there, and I think it should be investigated. Thank you. I say, Stage Glenny, welcome to the show. I'm going to post the same question to you. I was just reading the thread, and somebody, Jesse Peewee, said. Liberia will soon be like Haiti. And the point he's trying to make, when people are taken advantage of for a very long time, where they cannot get justice in their own country, eventually they take the laws into their own hands. It's not something we recommend, it's not something we encourage, but because people get angry. This kind of decision that was uh, done by the judge in the court, uh, everybody understood what was there, even though I don't want to place any blame on the judge. What does that do to our society when every single time, time after time, a foreigner comes to the country, he or she commits a crime, and they walk scot free? Hello, there, everybody. It's good to be here. Uh, um, I mean, there's so many things that could happen based on what happened to this case. It's it's very concerning. Um, I, too, have been very focal in some of the things that I found out. Number one, that this case was not a juror case. It was a, it was a bench case where only the judge. What is interesting is um, from close family connection, um, it was Lucas who made the decision that he didn't want a juror case. Correct. So whether the family decided yes or and the family, too, had a part to say yes or no, I don't think that option was given to them. But this is what is even more concerning is that I learned that Tiawan Gonglo and um, James Yimpan, the solicitor or one of the prosecutor for the justice minister were the lawyers for the state. And so it's that when you're hearing somebody who you know have repetition in our community, who we know is a civil rights lawyer and all of that, and you hear this, you want to know what happened. And it can be very discouraging to the Liberian community 
to see this happening and see all the evidences and people talking about oh uh, um the, 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 the testimony was conflicting of course it will be conflicting this girl was traumatized i'm not a psychologist i'm not a psychiatrist but she was traumatized she almost lost her life so how would you have expected that she would have come to the to the testimony and be perfect now we don't even know how did they prepare her what questions did they ask her did we know she was prepared but i think this can have a negative impact on our society if it is not corrected it may be led to correct this case but it also may be a it may be a deterrent if the the legislature look into it from to stop somebody from doing it again and it also may be a lesson to the judges because it's it's an embarrassment for the court system in liberia that this judge would have decided that he didn't have enough evidence i'm also hearing that even the boys who saved jessica life were not allowed to testify so it's just so many pieces we don't understand the legal dynamics but like you said, we hope that people won't take the law in their hand, but it certainly will give them an iota of thinking about, you know, if we can get the justice we need, we may want to be able to, to do that. I think that's that's just, that's hard. It's a hard, um, that that decision that the judge made, I think it's a difficult one for our Liberian community right now. Yeah, Dr. Prince, I'm going to come back to you, but I, I want to take another angle on this case. Um, the social effect so to our society with these kind of verdicts. Now, they will, it's not so much on law, it's the after effect. Now, yes, it, yes, the point I'm trying to make. It seems every time, especially a Western foreigner who comes to Liberia, commits a crime, that person normally leaves the country. It doesn't matter what kind of crime it is. They will go to the court system. We all know it's rotten. And they meander their way through the courses. And do the judges understand what it does to the society, how it diminishes our population and our humanity? Do they understand this? So there's two social consequences that I'm hearing you speak about, Dwalu. One is when a white man, for lack of a better term, or someone who's a foreigner comes to our country and invade the justice system, pays others in the justice system, it tells us we are not safe in our own country, okay? It tells us that justice sometimes is not, uh, will not be in the interest of Liberians. It will be in the interest of foreigners. It tells us that we are feeling some sense of inferiority complex when it comes to people of a different race in our country seeking our justice system. Mama, mama, only, mama, mama talking. I'm sorry, guys, I have my grandson in here with me. So yes, that's, that's a social issue. It is a social issue about how we feel about ourselves, how the justice system feels about somebody who looks different or who is not a Liberian. We, we're putting these people up on a different pedestal other than a Liberian person. So that's the first thing. The second thing is what message does it send to us women? Okay, how, uh, how are we valuing our society? Because this is not the first time. You guys can recall the, the woman who... Uh, 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 obstacles were put into different parts of her body in the red light in the red light district correct, okay? correct. that lady is still in another is in ghana right now fear of going to liberia yeah. her the people who uh victimized her perhaps are roaming the streets and we saw i think somebody mentioned you know how the the the, the lawyers didn't even give them sufficient counts sufficient charges they just give them light charges so what I'm saying is that women are a very important and serious part of the Liberian society. If we begin to not take women seriously, if we begin to not value who they are, our society is going nowhere, okay? After all, we are the people who groom. We are we parents, men and women. We are the people who are, to some extent, responsible for the outcome of our society. So yes, on those two levels, so social issues, we tend to feel inferior to other people. That's the message that is sending, and we should not be the justice system is supposed to, to actually uphold uphold how important we Liberians are, how just how we are just as smart as other people. But in this case, it's telling us that we're not a white man, a missionary who is supposed to come in and preach the gospel of God, came in and said he wanted a second wife, killed, I mean uh slit the 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 the, the neck. The, the, the neck of Jessica and got us free. What message is it sending 
to us Liberians and to women. Father God, let me come to you. I want to stick on the social aspect of this thing. You know, in Liberia, there is a tendency where if something happens to us about Tokba's child, and my child is not affected. I tend to just leave Asiba Tokba to himself. He doesn't, nobody goes around him, nobody protects him. When will we understand that Father God's son is an extension of my son? If Father God's son is vulnerable and he's harmed in Liberia and nothing is done, my son is equally vulnerable. What would it take for us to understand this? Odwalu, sometimes we tend to be individualistic in this country. Um, it's the same thing with everything, um, uh, with drugs, with everything. Uh, people think that it's for one person, but these things have a way of cycling back to affect us. I think back in the days growing up, the community raised the child. Okay. Uh, one child was a community responsibility. I remember getting whooped by some of my mother's friends. Uh, you don't even need to go home, and you just go home and shut up your mouth. Uh, I, I, I mean, growing up in Bikino, it was, uh, we knew everybody by surname. All that Christian of my children in there, boop, you know, you know, not to be there, you know. They won't even call your name. They just say that this family children there. So people represented their parents, uh, both at home and outside the house. So you knew how to behave. Uh, I think evil came in this country since the war. Uh, people have gotten evil. There are some good reason why um, people would not want people to chastise the children nowadays. But that still doesn't mean that we cannot work together as a community to solve issues like this. This country is rotting all around. We just need to find a way to enforce the law. The thing about enforcing the law, it doesn't, it doesn't help or hurt one person. It is a crawl. The law is the law. Uh, if we start to enforce the law and putting the terror mechanism uh, in place, I think this will help reduce crime. But if we use camaraderie, they, look, one of the things we like about this country, Dualu, we have too much camaraderie on the ground. Honestly, people will deliberately, willfully hurt you and beg people to come and beg you. There are some people that you can't resist. And it's like a susu. You do it for me, I have to do it for you. And that is hurting us. Sometimes we do not need to sweep things out of the road. We need to fight it. But it's not easy to have that yet because uh, there's camaraderie here. People will, will, will help each other. People will cover up for each other until it, it reaches to the extreme that you cannot bear anymore before people do something. So, uh, yes, things have changed. We just have to be able to put our foot down and make sure that the law Thank you. Is, you know, takes its course. Mr. Jackson, let me let me let me ask you this: What what are the disadvantages of our society if we continue to subordinate our interest to that of foreigners? What does that do to our society? Okay, but look, first of all, I want us to just get something very clear. <clears throat> you know, to blame the dysfunction of Liberia on the war is totally unfair. Anybody who's read Liberian history will know the country was founded on dysfunction. And in the 30s and 40s, there were leper societies. There were high men. There were things that happened in the country. There were, you know, a lot of bad things that happened in the country. We just swept under the rug. Okay? I mean, let's just face it. We know that we know about uh, female genital mutilation. We know about what they call it, people taking people or body parts and making medicine with that. That's, that's Liberia. What you saw during the war, eh? the cannibalism that you saw during the war, where people were eating people's hearts and people livers, it's part of it's part of the historical nature and tradition of Liberians. Certain parts of Liberia didn't have graveyards in the twenties and thirties. That is that is your country. So in order to fix your country, you got to go to the root cause of the dysfunction to fix the society from the root. And that's where the leadership comes from. But let me, add, let me just think, this is not about one foreigner. I mean, big deal. Man, the, okay, I mean, it is sad. And and, and Jessica is, is, is the victim, but uh, there are two societies in Liberia. Society, the society of the social elite, 
that includes the foreigners and their political and social and even social allies. They are law unto themselves. They don't respect any law in the country. And then the other never Liberians who have to respect the law. You you see you, you see the traffic and you see people creating third liens and nobody there are no consequences for it. Eh? You see things that happen in Liberia that cannot happen any place else where you can a foreigner can come and open up a store and start selling salt. That would never happen in Ghana. It's so it is it is not just about one foreigner. And which is a very important important case, but the 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 a Jessica, the a Lucas case is illustrative of a more fundamental problem in the country. The country has to be reordered, okay. And I was hoping that the election of President Borka, and yet stay stay plenty time yet. But let's let's see a fundamental reordering of the society because that's what Liberians want. Liberians are yearning for that. And even though some of us who are on the CDC side, we are yearning for a fundamental reordering of the society. How that starts, how that is, is manifested, is, it depends upon you who are in the forefront of social change today. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Welcome, Mr. Boxworth. Mr. Jackson, I'm going to give you 30 more seconds. I disagree with you entirely on the cannibalism thing. I don't know of any tribe in Liberia that I've read anywhere that were cannibalistic. Let me give you 30 seconds. I'm, I'm not I'm not going to go into it because it will bring schism. Okay, but let's just, just be very clear. It's true. No, but you can't make no kind of statement that disparages the whole country and then say you can you can clarify. Because, What's that? So, 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 that so the cannibalism that, you, that was that was evident during the war, where do you think it originated from? During the war, where did that cannibalism come from? You tell us. But you saw it. We saw it during the war, but that's I not an indication the, that the people did not have start from the war. If you read about the leper society in the twenties and thirties in Liberia, go to the leper societies and go. go communities. Go, let me say now. Go read about the leper society. Go read about the 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 the, 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 the what they think they have men and taking human human parts. Where no, are the people? But okay, that's not, all that's not the, Listen. I'm not gonna be put on trial here, okay? The, I said it. No, but you, no, you keep, you keep. You, no, 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 hold on, stand, 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 stand. Give me one second. Stand, give me one second. Give me one second. Respond. Give me I'll one respond. second. My point to you is, you come and you make categorical statements yeah, that you cannot but, support with facts, with information, and then you expect us to not ask you questions. You then can you ask me, but I can choose not to, no, to no. respond. I'm not gonna respond. Okay, but then don't, don't say we're putting you on trial. You yeah, but you right, put me in a trial. But don't say we put you in a trial. I will not respond. I will not okay. respond. Okay. Look, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. Media is a reflection of all of us. If we say that, yeah, you make statements. But, but okay, the cannibalism during the war originated from some place. Okay. Okay. Where is that place? In a vacuum. Mr. Mr. Jackson. Okay, so let's let us be clear. Did we have cannibalism during the war? Yes or no? Yes. And where yes. did that cannibalism come from? It came from the tradition. Of Liberians. Well, I don't, okay. Mr. Jackson. Okay. Thank so you. If you disagree you. with that, that's fine. But I can tell you by the research I did and some of the things, the history I know, I just refer you to the Leper Society. Okay. Okay. I'm, Sam, I'm, Sam. I'm, I'm, I'm referring to this. Since that, since that they talk, since that they talk, let me ask you. When I was younger, they used to say the whole ritualistic thing that was for body parts to ship to other countries for people who were sick and stuff. Are you saying the Maryland ritualistic killing was for people to actually eat him or be? No, I, I never said that. They, they, those people, they were executed because they were they engaged in ritualistic killing in the, in the nineteen seventies. Ritualistic right. killing, and right. they extract their body parts to, to make medicine, and that's a fact. Yeah, but no, no Mrs. it's Jackson. a fact. Mrs. Jackson. It's a fact. Mrs. Jackson. It's not true. Mr. But Jackson. let me just finish. Let me just finish. Okay. Let me just finish. Go read this book on Charles Taylor by this guy of what the name. The drinking of blood. He accused people within the NBA of drinking blood. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. Yeah. We agree all those right. things happened during the war. We don't disagree, Sam. But, but, but where did it originate from? Hold up, hold up. Where how did Abraham manage to, to internalize it? Where did they get it from if it was not part of our history? 
Yeah. And Labro is not the only country where they have cannibals. I guess, I guess com human computers history, are part of our history. Human history is history, replete right? with cannibalism. Human computers history. Are part of our history. Yeah, but human history is replete with cannibalism. You know, yeah, that's true, Mr. Jackson. No. But, yeah, but, but, but are you trying to argue like made. it's something? Yeah, okay. Some tribes did not have graveyard. That means that yes. entire tribe were eating human beings. Yes, yes, some, some tribes do not have graveyard. Yes, yes which tribes? Which tribes do not have graveyard? I'm not going to go into it, but I, mean, I don't want to get. I mean, okay, you, that's enough, Mr. Jackson. Jackson. I mean, uh, Mr. Topa. Let's move forward. Let's move I'm going to come to Mr. Topa. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. This is a, the only reason why I wanted to provide clarity because I personally have not heard about it. I know during the war, we all were what happened during the war, and we understood why it was happening. Most of the kids were drugged. People told them, if you do this, you're going to do that. You're going to be more powerful. And that was the reasoning behind it. Some things can become new. It doesn't mean it was always there. I understand human history is replete with cannibalism. That is a fact. Absolutely. But I have to understand something too, though. So you think like is, 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 is when you're going to do your, your business was not cannibalism. It was this thing that they believe. As a matter of fact, let me come back to you back on topic. The social issue of always subjugating our interests to everybody else, not just in the Jessica case. When it comes to business, when it comes to economics, when it comes to cultural norms in this country, we adopt things. We, we throw Liberians to the side. What is that doing to our society? This is where I want to focus. Let's, let's talk first about nationalism, patriotism, and understanding our history, right? And we got, look, we got some people who really know our history. We got Dr. Burroughs, we got Dr. Brewer, we got Dr. Dunn, we got some other historians. We see one of the historical society on um, social media. But the bulk of our population today have no idea of our history. And I keep talking the thing about us learning civics, okay? You learn to understand what it is to be a responsible citizen when you learn civics. You start to know that you have an obligation to your country to understand the nuances. You have the obligation to your fellow citizen. You have your obligation to do the right thing. And most of our people today do not have that moral compass about the right things and stuff. I mean, Hassan said it. You gave a small child five dollars in Liberia to go buy water, one bag of water. They come back, they ain't giving you change. They just stand there. If you, the thing you forget, they go on with your change. So the, the crookedness, the deceit is just so pervasive in the society at all levels. People just feel they have to get over you. They have to get something on you or get something from you. Before they leave you, it's just a, it's now a cultural thing, and I think leadership comes from the top. I used to harass Madame Salif, you know, to be that person, to be that voice. The same way with George Weah when he came to power, I, you know, was saying you got to be the, the 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 moral voice that can change. Not knowing the man was so <laughs> extreme on the corrupt side, he could not represent. This is an opportunity for Joe Zuckerberg to start to change the mindset. And sometimes you hear him talking about it, but I don't think it's enough. And there are so many examples where he can use them and move this country forward in the level of our thinking towards our nationalism, towards our patriotism, and to being better citizens. And all of us here on this panel, we should try our best as well to model the kind of behavior and to talk about these things so that other people who are listening can understand that there can be a better Liberia if we love each other better, if we engage each other, if we prefer each other. On the business side, it's very sad. Look, do you think Liberians cannot get together and get a company that's into destination inspection and say, look, come partner with all in our country and let us run our port effectively and efficiently? Yes, there are Liberians. Will our lawmakers now, if this particular contract were to go to them for ratification and approval, would they be open to receiving Liberians and being part of all of these kind of activities? Because that's how we can really increase or build wealth in our country, create employment in our country and everything. But if we don't think like that, that Liberians are just as good as other people, or because of corruption, we prefer not to do business with them, do business with the Lebanese man or the Indian man or somebody from somewhere else, then we're pushing our own people down. But we have to start to recognize our professionals. And we've got professionals across all spectrums, uh, or, you know, uh, all sectors, all capacities, all professions. We have to use them. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Tukba. Since Glendy, 
it's up to you, the social issue, on, on recognizing who we are as a people, on putting our interests first, especially here in Liberia. I mean, in all things. And I don't know when we're going to start to do that. To build this society, we need to do that. How do we get our people to understand that social issue matter? Uh, I mean, I think Ava has touched a little bit on that. Um, civic, ed civic education is important, but even if we don't have that, we have to continuously start talking about it. We have to start educating our people. We, we also need to start emphasizing to them that they matter. The issues about them matter. Such a thing like this, you find out that the verdict came and it was just sad to see that very few persons were at the court. Now, everybody is busy, but I mean, we I don't think we even had more than 100 persons or even 50 persons at the court with, with Jessica when such a thing happened. It's like, what? What are the things that should attract our attention that's going to better our society are the things that we need to start speaking about? Justice is good. Justice is one that's very important. But do our people have justice? Are we silent on justice issues in our country? Do we just say, oh, it's only for this group to talk about and not the other group? Uh, I like the fact that that, that Representative Mama Briggs preferred the, the, the suggestion in the, in the house of them to investigate but even the male counterparts, no one, who else spoke with her? Who else said anything? If those are the leaders that we have and they have the opportunity to speak to the different districts and areas, then it, it's, it's upon them to also start the training. But it should start from people understanding that your issues matter, your person matter. And once you recognize that and you expect people to treat you a certain way, you're going to be able to treat others the way they deserve to be treated. So we all own this. We all should be a part of the fact that we we, we don't prioritize what's, what's, what our social issues are and how important they are and what we should be talking about. So it's it's upon us and every Thank opportunity we have. Before I go to Mr. Maxwell, I'm going to go to Gooday. Uh, Mr. Gooday, uh, the social issue in Liberia, we don't take it seriously. Everybody's isolated. We don't understand that why it affects school day, affects me. How do we begin to think in terms of collectiveness or collectivism? So if one for all, all for one. Uh, I believe the problem with Liberia started from the initial stage. That is from the very first time our nation came to existence. Uh, we did not pass through what many African nations went through. We woke up once in the morning, our forefathers woke up once in the morning and declared independence. That yes, we are able to govern ourselves. Uh, we are a nation on our own. If you are coming to our country, you have to pay taxes. So a nation like that, we would say it was founded on a patriotic uh, basis instead of nationalistic form. Uh, that is people within our uh, it is an, uh, a place where we believe that everyone in the country should have rights. So places like Ghana, Ghanaians will tell you my blood is Ghana because they know what their forefathers went through. They fought for their independence and so forth. But we did not suffer. We got it because we felt people were coming to our country and they were not doing the right thing. So in order to reestablish this, like everyone said here, we have to rebrand. And the rebranding has to start with our elementary schools. I'm sorry, our generation may not be the one to succeed, but we can start. We can start the process by, you know, rebranding the entire learning system to start to teach people, if we want to become a, a patriotic nation, yes, we, we, we maintain that on our path. If we want our next generations to come to be nationalistic, let us start teaching them from the very beginning. But in high schools, uh, we were taught that Liberia is a land of, uh, land of the free, uh, uh, free land of liberty, where people will come and do this. What did we learn? that will make us to uh, get those social responsibilities as people. We have to rebrand. And our rebranding will start with the elementary schools. That what Fadi God said uh, about America teaching children 
uh, uh, you know, organizing programs that would teach you about love, sharing, and caring. Do we have these systems in our educational sector? No, we don't have. And when people like, like Fadiga's daughter and other Americans grew up in America, they have that sense of belonging, that they, they are from a place where they have to share and love. We, we were not taught that way. So Thank in you. order to get social responsibility, in conclusion, we need to set the stage for the next generations to teach them the right way to do it. I will close this section out with my brother, Matt Maxwell, Maxwell on the social issue. Uh, Thank you, sir. So I you will have one second. Yeah, yeah. Just to awaken the consciousness, somebody told me, but for these kinds of things, for example, this guy who was raising money, say you are building wells um, in Liberia, all over the country. He was on a raft in Texas for nearly one whole month, raising money. The guy was fake. He did not do what he said he did. I raised the issue with the guy who was at the Watch Commission, Ambassador, I can't remember the name off the top of my head. But I raised the issue with him and they tried to investigate and they found all the truth. In this case, Liberians in America need to step up, whether they're in that state or whether it's just people in the DC area, and like my friend Agatha Fangula, I gave her credit because she brought it up. Take a stand, protest, say something. And protest in America is not about 500 people. And it shouldn't be in Liberia. If four or five or 10 people stand together and say, this is the cause we stand for, they can bring attention to an issue and it can be a matter of investigation on this side as well. So hopefully that social consciousness and the desire to have justice for that young lady can be awakened in some of the current activists and we can do something about it. Yeah, yeah that's well, about course, that's we'll have to look into. Well, Mr. Jackson, let's let Maxwell come in, then we'll come back to you. Let Maxwell close this section now. Go ahead, Maxwell. Yeah, uh, hi to all gentlemen, and Dr. Richardson, how do you do? And hi to our viewers. I've listened to the conversation. Uh, day before yesterday, Dr. Richardson brought up this conversation about Jessica, and I thought to think about it after I left the show. We have to be honest because we are panelists and we are, the librarian people expect us to give them the best of rational understanding as it pertains to this. There are two narratives to this Jessica case, the legal narrative and the moral narrative. Let me say this clearly so librarian people understand me. Our justice system has won the legal narrative of the Jessica's case but they have lost the moral narrative of the Jessica's case. I'll repeat, our legal system has won when it comes to the legal narrative of the Jessica's case, but they have lost the moral narrative when it comes to the Jessica's case. There are, down, there are downstream consequences for both of <coughs> Right now, the issue of Jessica is on the moral consciousness of the librarian people. Librarian women are beginning to question as to if the constitution that should provide them protection within the justice system can actually provide them justice based on the failure of certain individuals within the justice system to appropriately look at cases in the way they should actually look at cases. Now, we have to be very careful with the war foreigners or foreigner. We have to be very careful and not use one case as a broad brush on all foreigners. This case is an isolated case. There are many foreigners that have come to our country, Liberia. They have behaved within the confines of our laws. They have treated our women and our men appropriately. They have respected our rules, our constitution, and our regulation. But there are sometimes slips here and there. That's the reason why we have our rules and our regulations and our laws to protect our people when someone comes into our country and misunderstand or misapply or misbehave so that the law can bring them to book. 
in the case of a misbehaved individual who came to our country under the guise of bringing Christianity and working closely with our people, he went rogue. He broke our laws. He broke our customs. He violated our secret oath of respecting and protecting our people. And our justice system did not look clearly into that case and allow him because it is the law. He's a free man right now, and we have to respect that. The law allow him because they failed to look at the case appropriately. That's Thank a miscarriage you. of justice. So we can move on from there. But we have to hold our justice system with the moral consciousness that they have failed the librarian people on this case. Most importantly, they have failed librarian women. And if the librarian women are not protected or feel protected in their own country, on their own soil, it's a detriment to our country. And we should take that into national consideration when it comes to this issue. There are many social issues we can talk about here today. I know Dwalu, I have even speak, spoken for five minutes. No, but maybe five issues. minutes. I'm, I'm actually watching the time. I'm being fair but to we everybody. Have to consider, we have to consider the fact that we have to consider the fact that you went off the tangent and so you went off your time. We're gonna end on time. We're gonna end on time these days. No, I know you went off tangent. You were talking about we didn't cast aspersion on every foreigner. We're talking about this specific case in the history of Liberia. Whenever a foreigner does something in the country, I'll give another 30 seconds. That's what I'm saying. Whenever, when, you whenever, whenever a foreigner time, does something, don't claim we're taking you off time. Watch your time yourself, please. Two minutes. Whenever a foreigner does something, that's what I'm saying. This case, this foreigner has a name and there's a case attached to them. There are many foreigners right now in country. They are living their lives. They are respecting our rules and regulation. So we should be calling this individual name because it's a legal case that is happening instead of using the word foreigner. That's what I'm saying. Okay, thank uh, you. Yeah, that, I, I will say this to you. You're in Belgium. If you did something, they're going to call you a foreigner. There's nothing wrong with calling someone a foreigner. It's not a derogatory name. This is a historical thing in Liberia. It's not uh, casting this. Now, the next topic, Dr. Francis, I'm going to come to you. I, 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 want, to, I want to say something quickly. For, please, I'll be, I'll if you be, can do it on a 15 seconds, Mr. Jackson, I would appreciate I'll it. I'll take 10 seconds. Look. Okay. Um, what, when I say something here, I'm not trying to make controversy or trying to make things up. You have a lot of things that are put in the chat room there on the on the level society. Up until the fifties, the level societies are very active, drinking human blood, eating human parts. Okay, and a lot of the, those kids that were fighting the war, their grandparents, their grandparents were from the leper society. So nobody just grow, wake up one day and start a war and say, "I'm going to eat human parts." If there's not a history and a tradition in the families of doing that. That's what Thank I have you. to say. But there is Thank ample you. evidence in there in the chat room now on the level society and the eating of human flesh in Liberia. It's a historical yeah, problem. I, I have no, Mr. Jackson, thank you so much. The issue is, if we have an isolated case that is happening, but when you see an entire community or an entire And I said there were certain regions of Liberia. Certain yeah, regions region, of Liberia. And the region, region, region in I want you to read what I, what I put in the chat room on the level society. I want okay. you to read it. I okay. want you to read it. Dr. Francine, let me come to you. Yeah. We're going to talk about the EPS dis dismissal. They are dis dismissing approximately 200 people. And I'll just read briefly what was published by the Executive Protection Services. It says the administration of the Executive Protection Services has determined that you did not meet the minimum requisite re uh, requirements to serve as an EPS personnel. Additionally, the General Auditing Commission in its conclusion of the month-long audit of the EPS has determined that you fail to meet the minimum criteria to become an EPS personnel and has declared you and many others unfit to serve as an EPS officer. Therefore, your service has been terminated with immediate effects. Now, there are people claiming that, saying, oh, they're dismissing us because we were children of President We are they are dismissing seditions. Now, is the EPS doing the right thing by going through the books to make sure people are actually meeting the requirements to be in the EPS? Or they shouldn't be dismissing people. They should just go ahead with it. So, Dwalu, as we transition to this topic of the uh, termination of the EPS, uh, you know, we have to start from somewhere in Liberia. It's unfortunate when anyone, you know, loses a job, you know, because you're taking bread out of, you know, the family's uh, table or out of the, 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 the family's uh, uh, accumulations or collection. But at the same time, I didn't hear that I'm just firing you for the sake of firing. 
I heard you did not meet the minimum requisites or you're unfit to serve or the minimum criteria. Those were the things that I heard. Now, if it is true, if there are ways to determine that, okay, then by all means, the firing is correct. The firing is well, well in place. Now, am I saying that we should just throw these people out on the street? No. I've advocated here, and some people think it's funny because, you know, they think I'm speaking psychological jargon. We can provide a way to assist these people to move into different jobs or to hone their skills. That can happen in our country. We've never, I don't know if we've done that before. We don't have to terminate with evilness. We don't have to say, oh, pack your bag, go. We really need you no more. There's a way that we can do it, that everybody at least will be satisfied with determination. Termination is not a good thing, but we can do it in a way where people will be settled. They will not be too angry. Like some people argue, oh, if we put 200 men on the street, uh, they don't have any job. It could cause people to uh, riot and what have you. That's a possibility. And there's not, and there's, there's also a possibility that that won't happen. But we need to start somewhere in our country in order to get it right. We need to start putting people in the right places. We are known for having misfits in our country. Thank you. In our country. So thank you. Hey, Paddy Guy, the, the same question to you. The EPS, we know what the EPS does. Should we just have people in there who say, well, I was brought in by the previous administration. You cannot just dismiss me because I've been here for a while. Is that a justifiable reason? Doc, do you? You know. That's the first thing we have uh, Dwalu, uh, I listened to an individual on a video that stood up and said he had uh, he was dismissed and his arms were not taken and he will use it against anyone that tried to take it from him. And then I knew that we are in trouble. That I don't know what is going on with this administration that we brought in, but those what are you whatsoever happened to you? What a government fire you is not nobody right to be in government. That not nobody breath right to be in government. The government can hire you, they can fire you. For a man to stand in a studio and threaten to use gun, I knew then that we are in trouble. And we have been saying it. I worry about the national security of this country. But to be specific about that question, Dwalu, the past administration did a lot of things, a lot of evil. And this is one of them. This is to sow real chaos in the country. That's why they bloated the payroll, put people on the summit so that it can be, oh yeah. Look, government, you cannot hold or the, the, your, your, the next government hostage by doing these things. They, they, they create, they set it up. They set the country up to fail so that this country can blow up in flame. It was deliberate and, and we have to cut it out. Look, what is the minimum criteria to become an EPS agent? Uh, uh, agent? When you see party loyalists, EPS protects the president. These guys are there to protect high-profile dignitaries and the president. They are the, the first that protect. These are the army. We barely call the army to get involved in everything so that the first line to protect the president. If you hire a bunch of party loyalists that wear party gear that was on the sacrament tree. Look, and they lose their independence coupled with not meeting the minimum. Some of them probably were not even high school graduate. I saw payroll that high school graduate were making more money than even the master degree holder. These guys messed up everything in the summit. They call me have right to fire anybody. I don't want us to restrain it to president. If they are incompetent and then all they were done and they were found out, Yes, we always like to tie bad economy with something. I'm not advocating for people taking bread from people more. Because when it comes to bread, people will die. People will sell this country just because somebody has to have bread in their mouth. But country has to move forward. We need to move beyond just putting bread in people's mouth. If, if they come to the safety of our president, they need to. And we trust uh, uh, same game, those guys that, that are in charge of that. It will feel, it will feel uncomfortable. Look. There are a lot of people, I got to, look, one of the things about being in the media, and I'll put it in there, right after this thing, an EPS agent, one of the agents, I won't call his name, ran away, he was seeking refuge at uh, um, Bud Naked's compound. 
EPS officer. This young man sent me a list of agents that are plenty to be around well, President Boeka. He sent me a list of agents and who should not be there in certain group of people, certain uh, uh, things were trying to carry on. I look at the list. I'm like, I think I share with Stender. I say, you know what? I don't want us to raise the alarm to say something. Anything can happen. This is a national security issue. If the EPS bus doesn't feel comfortable, that means you must have put yourself somewhere and they have all right to do it. But for people, look, these guys can seek regress so many ways. 200 people, yes. The government should find some compensation. What are they paying them for X amount of months in planning or absorb them in other agents, other agency? That would be something because these are paramilitary uh, 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 personnel. They can go to the DEA. They can be absorbed in the police. There are so many things. But the way they are pro pro proceeding and trying to politicize the thing and trying to make it about CDC, I don't think... Those group of dismissed individuals are proceeding well because it is the government is within their right to fire anyone, to remove them if they deem it that they are not qualified. The last government didn't have time for, for competence. They hire every time they can hire and put them in government. They ran a kakistocracy. It is not a secret. We know it. So if somebody, a groom force come in the room, decide to, to change governance so that it works for people, yes. I think they need to soften up you cannot fight government. If they want, if they believe that, oh, they didn't take my arm, uh, or is it two or three, if they didn't take my arm, eh, eh, I will use it, come out. I'll be surprised if, they, if, 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 if you guys are not dealt with. I think they need a former group, meet the, the, the authority, say, hey, we used to work here, whether we are not qualified, is there a way that you can absorb some of, in, some of us into your government? Is there so? I don't want people to start seeing themselves, especially people within the the the, 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 the security apparatus, to start seeing themselves as sedition or UPA. Look, few months ago, the police were considered job. We are police. Right after I told I told uh, 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 Nelson, Prima, I said, my man, one of the institutions that I believe in in this country is the national police. No matter what government comes, the police can withstand it. Patrick Sedu left, the police became uh, uh, Joseph Worker police. Automatically. You do not hear the same thing with the police. In other institutions, because they have a foundation, a solid foundation. For an institution like the EPS and other small paramilitary group, you, cannot, you do not have the same luxury. So they need to stop thinking as partisan, start to think as Liberians, if they feel disenfranchised, I think they should form a group rather than going in the, in the public and protesting and thinking that they will take our arm. Those days of using arm in this country is over. If you think you're going to bring CDC, Sony, Web, Bear, and come in the street, no matter to around, we will arrest you for on the street. You will be dealt with. And I think the police should deal with them. I think, I think the police were very unprofessional with that guy. That they're trying to point in the car. That guy should have been subdued and handcuffed and drive to court. And I hope that's the last time we'll see such a thing happening that someone will take the server going go in, in studio and say they will show go. What are they on? But I don't blame them. We have been too diplomatic with these guys. No matter what, yeah, you are an individual, you can organize yourself, put together. There can be other ways, since you guys have had training, there can be other ways that you guys can be retrained and resolved. But if you want to still do the partisan thing, and think that it's a CDC versus a UP thing, and want to politicize it, they should be rooted out. It is okay, not a Thank you. Uh, let's go to Mr. Jackson, and then Mr. Tukbai, good day, and then Prince Maxwell. So, Mr. Jackson? Okay, so, so um, I mean, I've, I've still like been on and off 54 years, okay? And 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 I don't know how long fighting got better like Bureau, but uh, when, he, when he speak like that, it tells me that He's not understanding the reality in Liberia. I mean, you had the, for the first time in the history of the country, you didn't have uh, Armed Forces Day because there was an effective mutiny of the military. An effective mutiny, and they were in multiple places in the country and they upset the peace in the country. And we're not even willing to release the report because of security reasons 
And then you're talking about people with arms. So it's just in any, I mean, uh, talk to people who went to Iraq. The reason why the Iraq war and the, the Afghanistan, those things, that, that's the last time, because you're winning them and you try to like, you know, disarm uh, or arm people and don't give them a reasonable time to adjust and to give them food and to give them uh, safety and to make them a part of this, the society. You, you can't, people with arms, okay, no matter what you think about that training, you can't just set them down like that. And no serious society does that. You, you have to face it in. It has to be part of an organized structure, an organized way to face it in. Emmanuel Gonkwe, one of the rescue children, wrote a brilliant piece today. And I'm sure, and, and I put it in the chat room there. Look, Liberia needs to be fixed. People who they don't who don't belong on EPS payroll, they need to be need to be taken out. But there has to be a way that you 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 phase it in to minimize the human suffering associated with that. That is the Liberia that every Ellen and uh, tell her how SOD, Ellen King, she did why she created her own ERU. Huh? Yeah, it, it didn't happen. Eric, Eric, and then Sawyer didn't have his own black barrier. That is the country that you have. But you need to fix it. You need to fix it holistically. You can't come and set, take 300 young men and women with families, and you say, today, as of today, your check ends. You're asking for trouble. It's a disaster waiting to happen. It's not only about being compassionate. But it's just about any rational paramilitary or military organization, you just don't go ahead and put men on the streets. You can't do that. So you have to do it in a methodical way that will minimize the, the, the suffering and help the organization. Okay? And I can tell you, the current Boca Security Force don't have the capacity, don't have the, the manpower, to stop any serious thing in Liberia. But the Liberian people I disagree. Yeah, let me finish. Liberian people want peace. They're not going that route. Liberian people want peace. They're not going that route. Okay? But I can tell you that the military, 1,500 uh, partially trained police officers, we preserve the peace in Liberia because we're Liberians and we see what war has done to us. You think? You think you think or, or, or peace is because people don't have the capacity. Peace is because people have a stake in society. That's what peace is all about. When you have a stake in society, that's a stakeholders. That, that's a reason. You, you why are meet, you are Mita Dualu. Let me break in here, Kesi. Okay, you are okay now. I just brought in. Yeah, Mr. Jackson, thank you for the guy. You went for 50 hours. We were have some internet problem here. Then pull it. I think ask about time, right? We'll go yeah. to and says, Jenny, as about the back, guys, let's keep it two minutes. You're not rotating, we're not playing the air game. We're just two minutes. As about the back, yeah, Sam, you can't be talking out of both sides of your mouth. Seriously, it sounds like you're encouraging war to me. You're encouraging destabilization exactly or something. True. I agree. You can't be doing, you can't be doing this or you know, to take these people, it mean they will can't jump in the street, they will cause war and stuff. Let them try it. If that's what they really want to do, let them try you it. You said it but can't be the, the, the that kind of stuff here. You heard me use the word war. You are insinuating the implication. The implication. Said, okay, let me repeat myself. Let me repeat myself. Let me get it very clear to you. I said we don't have a strong enough security force for any kind of uh, or, or what kind of insurrection, uprising, or, or, or any kind of street protest in Liberia. The reason why we have peace in Liberia is because we Liberians, the fact, the fact that we have a diminished security force in the country, we want peace because we saw the effects of war. And I'm not that's asking not, for war. I'm saying that. You said, listen, we finish. You said, I'm you saying know, you said, if you want to you put people down, you have to put people down. I allow you to speak. 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 You started off saying you cannot fire X amount of people and put them on the street and blah, blah, blah. Then you disagree the reaction. You suggest. Hold on, Sam. Sam. We're not going back and forth. You hire your say. You are suggesting then that should be the alternative for these people to act in this direction. We can't be doing that. We're encouraging 
destabilization of what the situation is today. And I've got confidence in the law enforcement. You can, they don't have numerous protests in this country. During George We Are Town, during, so what a big difference among the protests that were during early, the protests during George We Are, and now that because 300 people from the EPS or whatever, you know, and one of them brandishing gun in public on national radio, and we think that behavior that's going to be condoned? Come on. We got to set examples and have law and order in this country. Otherwise, we might just well be, you know, we are in a kind of court system. Yeah. Thank you, sir. How, yeah, man. How, how, how professional they were. Not being the government. Yeah, yeah, Fadi guy, Fadi guy. I'm sorry. Maxwell, I think it's your time. Your two minutes, sir. Uh, yeah, okay, Maxwell. Right, then, so so, quick, so quick, let me just use let me just use my first one minute to just say, uh, 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 uh you say I went off tangent. I disagree with you. I did not go off tangent. Let me just say this: the same thing is happening right in front of me here. Uh, Big Brother Isaac said, uh, Liberian people uh, are cannibal, basically his statement, quote unquote cannibals. You push back on that because that's casting expression. No, I, uh, uh, Sam Jackson, not you. Sorry, Isaac. Uh, Sam Jackson said that, right? And then you push back because that is not right, right? Because it's, it's casting expression on the entire Liberian population when that's not the case. It's the same thing I'm doing when it comes to the foreigners. You can't cast expression on all foreigners. There are specific cases here. And I do agree with Dr. Chinaway uh, since she said the campaign yesterday. We have a travesty of justice, and I agree with that, and we have to protect Liberian women at all costs. But the justice system in Liberia have lost the moral ground on this issue, and we have to bring them to bear to come to that. On the issue of the EPS, look, listen. I don't know why the like, I don't know why people are making this into a conversation. This is not a conversation. The EPS is a very deeply dignified and highly integral part of our national security. When the leaders have sat down and decide or decided that there is somehow a fracture of the functionality of that particular organization and it needs reform, they should go ahead and make reform in it. I've worked closely with individuals in that. So I have firsthand knowledge of those individuals and their psychological behavior. I worked with them for five good years and I've posted many times about their behavior and thanking them prior to George Weah administration. If this Boycott administration sees fit through assessment that individuals, certain individuals within the EPS will have to be removed because they do not fit the criteria to carry classified information, I do agree with that. People fail to understand that each and every EPS officer carry classified information. Nobody's talking about that part, that these guys are charged with holding national security information every day, where the president goes, where ministers goes, where the vice president goes, where the, the, the Senate, the, 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 the pro tem goes, every, across the entire spectrum of our leadership, including the chief justice of the Republic of Liberia. They know where they go. If we have individuals who do not understand the integrity and the dignity and the level of national security plus holding national secret. If they don't understand their responsibility, take them from there. They can go into the police, they can go into the army, but that particular unit must be respected and protected. So the argument, we should all step back and let the people do their job. Because by protecting the EPS is protecting national security and protecting our secrets that we must at all costs protect. There's no doubt about that in everywhere in Liberia. So the argument is a non and void argument. Let them go find the opportunity to work in the police. There's no argument about that. I left the government because I was fired. I found work somewhere else. Let them go and work in the army. The army will be recruiting, hopefully, maybe next year and year after next, they can go into that. But the argument that people are firing people from the EPS because of discrimination, no, 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 no. It's the issue of our national security. Every senator in the Republic of Liberia has an EPS officer attached to them. Think about that. 
and those people are not trusted? No, no, no. You, you, we can't make argument about that. Thank you, sir. Let the EPS organization do what they have to do. Mr. Flomo. Uh, you know, let's be frank, where politicians should stay in their political space and allow the security folks to stay to where they are. Around the entire world, presidential guys are not handpicked people. These are people who are trained or who should be trained where nations spend money on them. So do you want for our presidential guys in Liberia to be nephews, brothers, and sisters, you know, relatives coming into the service because we love them? No. And I love the system that it took, right? Like what you read, they called auditors, they came in, they, they did all of the formality, and at the end of the day, they catalog reasons why they are not competent. But my only problem with the system or with the EPS boss is I, I may not be right. Uh, is the way they, uh, they, they, they uh, how you call it, they fire them or they told them to leave. They should have allowed them or tell them to bring in all of their equipment, get the weapons from them, and then issue them the letter. As we are issuing you a letter, and not just issuing the letter, right? Since you are already getting rid of them, put politics aside. Give them what belongs to them, present a letter to them, and get your equipment from them, and let them go in the society. But, ah, you cannot leave a man with a weapon and tell him, hey, we don't need your service. Some may not even bring the weapon back. I'm sorry. Uh, that is why I said maybe I'm not uh, informed about how they did it. But I listened to one of them on, I think, Voice of Liberia saying he has a weapon. So that shows that they did not take his weapon from him, but he was served a letter. He was served a letter while he stayed hot. Yeah, come in. So, uh, let me say something about, let me give an example. My brother had a service weapon in his badge. He has not turned it in yet. After you resign or, or they remove you, they, you, you know that you do the, the weapon, you do you you are not allowed to carry this thing. You're supposed to train it in. Yes, I don't know how they should have done it, whether it should have been done first or something, but that is not a reason for anyone to threaten to use it. So, so are if you they done? fire you because you're very tired, maybe you will take one and go shoot out the more. Are you, you done? Thank that you, that, that is the result of coming from a civilized society. That you no, know but no you... rational person can say, I will take my boy and shoot people who are going to fire me. I mean, this, so, this just gave us more reason why these guys are incompetent to even be having gone. So, I think that rational this? people can do that out of frustration. Cannot and, and, yeah, for and, and desperation. The man, the man is going home. He's not going to have money anymore to take care of his family. He can be irrational because of that. I understand the position. I do agree. That Gude, I do it's agree. an excellent position that that, that 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 good day is saying. There should have been processes put in place. I agree. I, 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 I agree. Before. Say, I agree on that. When I say it, they are stupid. No, no, no. I same. I do not. I do not disagree with you. Then I do not yeah. disagree with you. I do not disagree with you. Yeah. I do not disagree with you. Yeah. Thank disagree. you. When I say you might have a process, then you can't. You can't hit me. Yeah, you but gentlemen, gentlemen, I got plenty. That's the first so conclude. Mr. Goody, another 15 seconds, sir. Yes. Right. Okay. So in a very civilized society, this is how people do things. If you are like I'm I, I'm currently, even though I'm not in Liberia, but I'm still with Spoon FM. If Spoon is to lay me off, right? Spoon is gonna request for all of what I need to present. And if there are benefits that I need to get. Spoon will give them to me and then get that belonging from me. Issue me my letter. Spoon and I, we are no longer in contact. So I think procedural errors were made. Thank you. Procedural errors were made. I, I'm, I, I stand to be corrected. Maybe the date end, those guys refused to present their weapons. Okay. But if they did not do, there were procedural errors that should be corrected if they Thank have you. to continue with the process. Thank you, Mr. Fomo. Let me say yeah. that for corrections, if I come down to the right thing, it took 30 days. There was an investigation done. 
there was determinations made and they did not meet the requirement. In fact, the GAC was involved. They didn't just lay these guys off. They had to meet basic minimal requirements to stay in there. Now, that's another thing I'm going to say, though. We cannot make decisions based on fear when it comes to the governance process. Just because a man might possibly go off, it doesn't mean you don't make the decision administratively that you have to make to make sure the entity is strengthened. Dr. Francie, I want to come back to you with this question. I get the portion that people deserve jobs. I understand that. But nobody is entitled to a job with the government. There are other routes you can take. You can say government has to provide that environment where you can get job for yourself. But if you were brought into the EPS, not to do proper channels, especially to the civil service administration, should you be in that position? I say no, you should not be in that position. Dr. Francine, your take. So um, again, I like to go to the concept of us resetting our country. We have to start from somewhere. Not long ago, uh, you know, Mr. Muller was on this show and he said that he did an analysis of how we put people in different positions and he found that there was a lot of misfits. So it is the case based on the other report that these people are not fitted to be in the EPS. There are certain requirements that are expected and they didn't meet those requirements. Now, am I saying that we should just throw that out? I'm advocating for another step. And that step is uh, be a little bit humane. You know, have a conversation with these 200 men. Help them hone their skills in other areas. Liberia is so prime right now for agriculture. And I, I'm going to end when we'll come to our closing. Help them hone their skills. This is not a be it and end all. If you don't work with the government, you know, you don't have a job. We all have been in. You know, that spot before, uh, although some of us are in a country where if you don't have a job, there's a social network that will cut you. Maybe some of us don't even use the advantage of that social network. But again, you know, to answer your question, Dwalu, this is not the end of the world. Let's help them put them in different places. Let them go. They are not fit. According to the audit, they didn't just fire them at all from what you're saying. They Correct. did an audit. They discovered that they didn't have the prerequisite. They didn't have the requirements. And that's a highly, highly, highly uh, sophisticated job that you need to have a certain uh, security sophistication. If you don't have it, they should let you go. Ms. Glendy, your take? Yeah, I think I hear what everyone is saying, but I also want to caution all of us, like what Ava, sometimes we're on here, we have to be careful as to what we say because a greater a greater percentage of the population listens to us and we don't want to sound insightful to people um, and, and start promoting things that we shouldn't be promoting. While suffice it to say, if you're not, if if you were giving certain materials, it's an expectation here. The five different jobs, some jobs you have to turn in your batch, you have to turn in your room, your office key, those things you have to turn in your laptop if you have that, whatever they've given you. If it is that we're talking about security issues, if you know that the gun were given to you because you work in a certain area, if they didn't request it for you to return it, why have you not returned it? Why wait to be told to return it when you shouldn't have it in your possession? The only reason why you had the gun was because you had a particular job to do. And if you're not doing that job anymore, why are you, why are you, uh, 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 um, Posting about the fact that you still have the gun, you should turn it in. And 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 if this they have, a, I don't. I'm not in favor of them terminating people because some of these people have families. But if they found out that these people are in positions that they are no longer qualified for, I think the government can develop a program to put these people in different areas where they can serve in, and, and, and instead of just terminating them and not having anything for them to do, because of course. That may be upsetting to them also, but we all must be very cautious. Um, I like what Ava said. There be, have been so many different threats, different protest things that have gone on. Uh, I think the security president in Liberia, they are up to the tax. And of course, I don't think the international community is going to just sit there and allow any uprising to come. So let's be cautious as to how we, how we say what we say and how we encourage people to somehow insinuate that they, they should be violent when things don't go their way. Thank you so much. And I think it was Mr. Jackson. Okay, so, so 
So to, to come in here and insinuate that I'm calling for an inciting violence is pure poppycock and unadulterated. I don't I don't know what else to say. Look, I was very clear. I said, you take arm from people, paramilitary, military, you do that in an organized way to minimize the impact on them and on society. And you want to agree with me. And you said you can absorb them into other areas. Yes, but have a plan. But what this looks like is just you kicking them to the curb. That's what it looks like. You think these are irrational people? If you were to sit down and talk to them and say, listen, the EPS, the bureaucracy is bloated. You did not come here the right way, but here is a path that we're going to walk together to, to, to uh, clean the, the, the EPS, but to make you whole. You think these kids, these young men and women with children, they'll be making, they'll be, they'll be making, they'll be making threats. And these are not idle threats. Okay, they have the capacity, but Liberians, I told you, post war since 2003, we've learned our lesson. We learned our lesson. And we have peace in Liberia. It's not because of the strength of the military or the strength of the security. We have peace in Liberia because we are stakeholders. And it's in our best interest to maintain the peace and stability. It's not because we are afraid of 1,500 soldiers to shuffling or a few thousand LMP people. That's not what keeps peace, keep peace in America. You saw on January 6th, 2021 here, when irrational people went over and started to take over the Congress of the United States, who was an insurrection in the United States. Huh? You saw that happen here in a civilized country. And you want to like uh, 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 pretend that the people don't have the capacity, they have the capacity, but they will not do anything. And my voice, by telling them, say, there must be a rational and orderly approach to the removal from the EPS, will cause them to go in the street. This, you, you, are flame, you are fanning the flame of insurrection by accusing me of that. When I say be, when I say be cautious, because I love my country, I live in my country, I have homes in my country, I have investments in my country. I am a stakeholder in Liberia. You may not know that. You think I some I born on Pluto? I'm a born from Sunny Wen. My house is in Gate Town. Thank you, Mr. Blair. Thank you, sir. I, I want to see peace in Liberia. I'm not inciting people to go out there. The way that you are the way you are responding to the EPS thing is you are inciting people. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. people to take actions. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. Thank you very Mr. much. Jackson, before, before you go away, and really I mean this about 10 seconds, sir. Do you think somebody who came in through the back door, did not meet proper channels, should be rewarded for that? 10 seconds, please. But listen, but are you listening to what I'm saying? I said we should be removed, but you should be removed in an orderly fashion where it minimizes the impact of the person and gives them an orderly way to look for alternatives. That's, that's what I said. Thank you, sir. Mr. Yes. Mr. 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 Togwa, your take, sir. Are we, are we on another topic or are we still on the Western topic? Oh, I mean, you, you're closing it up. You're the last person, the last person okay. on the EPS. Thing. Wonderful. Look, again, 500, 1,000, 5,000, 10,000. If these people got on our payroll, through the wrong process. And we, the people of Liberia, paying their, their salaries and they do the necessary investigation and find out that they are not supposed to be on the payroll, they should be removed from the payroll. Nobody talking about witch hunting and we're just talking about basic, just a basic process. And even if they are security officers, it should be no threat, which will be a country of laws. Because you got gun on your side, in me, <laughs> you use it, or people will just let you use it, you know. To in any country, in any country, insurrection can happen. But to talk about the capacity and the ability of these guys, to me, you try to empower them in a way to say, Look, you're able to do this, you've got this capacity to do this, and that is not necessary in this case. 
these guys, if they're not competent, if they're not been to work, have not been to work as was found or whatever, they got no right to be where they are. So yes, they should be removed from you know being EPS officers. And somebody made a suggestion, I think, in terms of career transition. What opportunities are there for government to find a way for the guys to be either training something else or to, you know, go into something that's a transition opportunity for people that should be created. So it's all about thinking government and having government in an organized way. If we can do that, things should be better. But if it's just, that's why I agree with saying it should be organized. It should be focused in a direction or positive direction, but to encourage the capacity of those people to cause something different to happen is where I disagree. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Colonel Girl, well, welcome to the show. Our last topic for the night. We are going to chime in on the land issue in Liberia. There's a lot of land dispute across the country. There was a case in Johnsonville as well. Um, I will start with Maxwell with this. It seems like, you know, you think when the government probates a deed, and that deed, that means the government has done its work, make sure this is authenticated, that Glenny is not selling the land to us, he's selling it to me, to good the Flomo, and all of those allow. What is going on with the land dispute issue in this country? How come the government has not gotten this under control for this length of time? What's going on, Maxwell? Well, well first and foremost, let us let us uh, categorize or cast the issue of land so that Liberian people understand this. The issue of land in Liberia is a legal issue. The issue of land in Liberia is a national security issue. The issue of land in Liberia is a fault line issue. Now, when I say fault line, what do I mean? There's a study that I saw a few years ago, I think it was five years ago, where there's a prediction in the study that the, the issue of land conflict in Liberia and all land confusion in Liberia can derive civil war, can lead to major conflict in Liberia. And I was shocked to have seen that report. I have to look for it again. And I, 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 started, I, I, I asked myself why, because what we need to understand is the issue of land is, is tied in with our tribalistic nature in Liberia. It's deeply tied in with our tribalism in Liberia. Is 100% connected to that. So it's a fault line issue. If the justice system of the Republic of Liberia and the Land Reform Commission cannot find a way to resolve this issue, it's going to drag in bigger players. Right now, there's just one or two little issue here, people selling land, reselling land, people claiming land, people taking land by, by, by authority, people taking land by, by, by hook and crook taking land by using their, their political office to take land from individuals if this continues it breeds a bigger and an insurmountable uh, fight and grievances that our justice system may not be able to resolve and that could be have a spillover effect so we have to start of think about that thank you Sam. and dr Francine, i want to come to you um, most recently, um, behind the Catholic uh, uh, hospital around the, the LU campus, the medical facility, approximately 13 acres of land were well, literally plow over. And somebody wanted to do was Mr. Gay, one of the case. Hundreds, if not, I was close to maybe two, two, 200 homes were broken down. What is going on? Why would the government sit there? People build year in, year out. Nothing is done. And then all of a sudden, Mr. Jackson comes in and claims the land. He has his property. deed. Now Mr. Do Jackson actually owns the land. But all these people have to go. What is going on, Dr. Francine? So it is an unfortunate situation, uh, Dwalu, that you know many of those people became homeless. But there are two situations that we have to look at. One is, do you just become a squatter on somebody else's property when you know that it is not yours? Okay. Uh, the second is, is it the government responsibility to move you if you become a squatter on somebody else's property? Does government has have other things to do, better things to do? So to tell you the truth, I believe the, I, the concept of corruption, it's all corruption. All right. People can go sit on other people's property after they pay somebody else to, you know, sign a deal 
to make it look like it's theirs or they would not even have the mother deed to that property. I've seen that time and time and time again. All right. Um, so we have to find a way where people can authenticate their deeds. All right. Sometimes and people who uh, violate uh, the other uh, person's privacy, pri privacy, they should be put away. They should be dealt with according to the law. They shouldn't be able to get away with that. I have a personal story. My sister-in-law that just passed away that was in Liberia of the Berry, she bought a property in uh, the Bronxville area, built the foundation to a house. While she was here, another party went on the property, broke everything down, and said that the property belonged to them after she had paid for the property. So in that case, we called the police. Nothing happened to the case until she passed away and moved on to another property. So I'm trying, what I'm saying is that corruption has a greater, 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 greater uh, uh, play in this situation. And then on the other hand, the consequences of this is it doesn't encourage <coughs> investors, we in the diaspora, to want to go home. Luckily, my sister in law loved Liberia so much that she said, okay, I'm going to, and she had um, enough money to say, I'm going to move on to another spot and make sure that I, that is legitimate. I mean, she did do her due process earlier. But again, you know, how do we go back home? Or how do we purchase land when you have these kind of situations where anybody can go break your property down or or, or or take your land and say, well, I have the mother D when you have another, when there's two or three Ds floating around. So that, those are the, all, those are things that the government need to look into. There's other things like customary land, there's women's rights land, all these different things that we need to be the, the government needs to look into faliga faliga how how is it possible in 2023 that mr sam johnson can buy the same land that i buy and possess two separate days and you can go to the archive and see the two separate days there people are not doing their job okay is it fair to say that the government itself to a large extent is responsible for some of these brouhaha we see around the land issue yes uh and besides that, we do not have any verification mechanism. People can easily duplicate document here, and I, it will shock you. Oh, uh, and the, the level of collusion in, in, in doing those things is another one that is very disturbing. Is uh, I have my buddy, he's, he's been fighting for some land his, his dad has on on Kerry Street. The, the, the guy, the, the old man is still alive, but these people managed to sell the land for 130000 in Liberia. They they evict people that was on the land, that was protecting the land. They were able to legally get them out and, 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 and sold the land with all proper deed. People can duplicate things and falsify things. So, and, and, and that person will go to court and nothing happened. I think what will reduce this thing a little is if we start punishing people, start making tougher sentence for people. Because land, the, 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 I don't know what it was. It was uh, Prince that said it. There is, if this thing is not resolved, there is a potential for conflict, serious conflict in this country if the land issue is not resolved. We saw some right here right to, to the Catholic Church, a whole community that were fighting there. People need to be punished that are doing these things. That I will deliberately, you know, sell somebody property and get a slap on the wrist. People are getting these guys are getting a slap on the wrist. They are rooming here, right here, stealing hundreds of thousands. So it's so easy to 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 fake documents and do things in no market. So we need a proper archive. We need a, 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 we need to make it more difficult to duplicate documents. We need to be able to 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 to, to fully. Uh, account for all the land, and and and, and I know the proper the, the process is long, but there needs to be a shorter and more uh, a, a reliable process when it comes to land. It shouldn't be easy for people to just falsify document, uh, 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 collude with someone, and, and and get this done. I know it, the process is slow to verify it, but at the end of the day, uh, we do have documents here. Uh, I was able to trace. Uh, uh, I've been in court with, 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 with a guy that that he didn't take the land and lease it. Someone leased it to him that uh, it was a family member, and that person did not have the proper document. But they, 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 they did some other 
the fossil fast on paperwork and did a lot of things. Now you got to be fighting for your own land. It takes months, yeah. years, and endless resources at the end of the day for you to get it back. So I Thank think it's easy for people to retrieve their land. It shouldn't be long process, and then there needs to be hard to make it difficult for people to, to, to falsify those documents. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. Before I leave you guys, I gotta run home. Do you do what recommendation or what would you recommend to, to, to set up a land tracking system so we don't have these problems, so to speak? Okay. So let's just be clear from an economic point of view that the lack of a proper land registry, land ownership is the source of our poverty in Liberia. In any society where ownership, what we call property rights, are respected, you can use the property rights as collateral to get access to capital, and you can grow an economy from there. You get a mortgage, you can get a home equity loan. Mm -hmm. and, and the fact that post-war, 21 years after war, to set up a GPS system that shows latitude and longitude, every piece of land on the planet can be identified by GPS. Longitude right. and latitude. Simple. The fact that we haven't done it in 21 years says a lot about us as a people that we are not interested in development. And then the second thing is the, the laws concerning land ownership in Liberia. The, the distinction between tribal lands, community lands, and the land owned by God. People will show you a land that President Daniel E. Howard or CDB King give them paper for. Whether that is forced or not, you don't know that because you don't have an appropriate land registry system. In 21 years, where simple longitude and latitude can, de can define the place where the land is, and we're still having a problem, if the problem is us, the problem is us. And and, 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 and the report that Prince was referring to, it used harsher language. It said there would be an implosion. But you don't want to say it because you're friends. Before no, I'm, I'm a diplomat. I'm a diplomat. I'm a diplomat. Former diplomat. Former diplomat. I can't use that word. 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 30 seconds, Mr. Jackson. 30 seconds. Okay, no, but I'm saying I understand. So it is us. We can fix it. Now, this is something that we can outsource and the ops and the, the librarians can form a company and eh? get the, the human capacity, the resource capacity, and can find a way to run a business plan to get an international company to come and run it. A land registry. So that's my point of view. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to go to Glendy right now and then ask if I took by Maxwell, Bute, and then Remy Gray. Glendy, how do you think we can prevent this uh, double selling of land in Liberia and what should happen to the people who sell land twice? So I, I think the first thing, this is, this is one of the conversations that I fear. I think I talked about it before where I'm the eldest of my parents, eldest eldest child and i have not had the opportunity to really go in and find out the different lens that my father had or i just know what he and my mother had together but it's even difficult because i haven't had the time to check i think government may be maybe getting an agency um to see I, I it may be a very difficult thing to do to survey everything or to find out who owns what but you have to start from there who owns what first? There is a national, I don't know, I think whether Lens of Mines is the keeper or whether the ICANS or whoever can 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 be able to go and check us. That's where I need to start from first. It's the first is determining which which of those things they have in the ICANS that my father owned or my mother owned to start from there. But this is a topic that, that I am so afraid of because I'm pretty sure there are areas that I, my parents own that we have squatters on. So I think the government, this is something that needs to be discussed as a whole and a decision needs to be made on, you know, first determining who owns what, who are the rightful owners. Same thing like, like how the foreign ministry said, bring in your passports. They can do that. Set up a, set up a, set up a committee or a, a, a commission 
to validate the different lens that people own. You bring your D, they authenticate if the D is accurate, and they, and they award that to you. The other person that brings that same D, if they cannot validate that the, that the land is for them, then they don't keep it. Mm-hmm. I don't think because people, some people are out of the country, or they're not there, or they haven't been to the area. I don't think people should lose their properties because other people have been there now, and they've been able to take it. I think that's where they can start from, set up a commission that can identify a process on validating properties that people have, because this land thing is a serious issue. Thank serious, you. serious problem. Thank you so much. Fati- uh, Fatima, welcome. It's good to see you. Uh, so I'm going to go Thank to you, Ava. Sir. Ava, what are some of the consequences of the land issues, the land disputes uh, in, in Liberia? You know, when you say or when you, when you buy a land, somebody else comes and claims it. How does that impact Liberians and the country at large? Well, we have seen some of the videos, right? Mm-hmm. People assume they got land or they assume somebody billing for them <laughs> and they go to Liberia and check and they put their hand on their head and they cry. But the issue again is fundamentally government, right? You in this country, you understand the value of land. You understand that if you have a structure on your property, it has a value. You can credit against that. You can get a line of equity against that, right? The bank respects that you have a property. The bank will know what your own investment in that property, your equity, and they will give you loan against those things. Unfortunately, we have not developed our market in Liberia. And Samuel Jackson is totally correct in terms of the, the identification of land, how easy it is today with the um, geo-information systems and services that are available. And this has challenged people so much that my friend, George Fumler, took it upon himself to try to find a solution to this thing. Yes. Yes. Sam is talking about foreigners. No, librarians are already doing it. And if government is serious, the government will come to us to help them do it, right? Um, We are able to take an area survey with drones mm-hmm. or the surveyor can go and get the GPS coordinates or the GIS coordinates, you know, either one, you can use either one. And we can position your property on Google Earth easily. We have that ability to do it. It's a process now, don't get me wrong. <laughs> and we can give you imagery of your property where you can get an overview. We are able to allow you to see any movement every three months, we can give you a surveillance, a surveillance um, video, pictures of your property to see if there are any changes. Because when you're over here or you somewhere, Kenya or anywhere else, people can encroach easily. And we must face the fact the population explosion, especially in Montserrat County, is huge. That's why places like Johnson Bay, where nobody was before land was not an issue today, land is a major issue. So we have that capability to do these things. But we also need to expand the capacity of the surveyors. We need to expand the capacity of the Liberal Land Authority. They have that responsibility. That's their mandate according to uh, um, the law that created them. And they're supposed to be providing that opportunity. We mentioned the, 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 the traditional land, whether it's the county level, the community level, the tribal level. 30 seconds. At this time, you know, people need to untap the potential in land. Mm-hmm. It must be appreciated. I got to start to teach librarians that your land has value. If yeah. somebody comes and want to lease your land, get equity in whatever project they're coming to put on that land. Don't just lease it for 20 years, 25 years, 50 years. Be a part of that process. Thank you. Because that's continuing revenue that you could get. But we we'll keep talking about the land business and, and share more with people. Thank you. Mr. Maxwell, uh, I heard you uh, agreeing with, I, I saw you actually agreeing with uh, Glendy when she was saying, maybe we need to set up a commission. Maybe we yeah, need yeah. to do something like what the um, Minister of Foreign Affairs did, like everybody bring in what they have and let's yeah. start from there. What are your thoughts yeah. about that? I, I do agree with uh, Glendy. Even though it's a work in progress, there are more details that, you know, that are moving parts here and there. 
for us to be able to figure this out. Let's understand this. And I want people to go back to history. One of the original sins of Liberia is the land issue. We shouldn't forget this. One of Liberia's original sin is the land issue. Mm -hmm. And just recently, the land deed for Monrovia was found. It, was, it got missing for almost a century. One of our uh, 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 Liberian-born historian yes, was able Mr. to find the, Mr. Borrow. Yes. And thank you, Mr. Borrow. Big up to you. We need to give you a national honor because you found that land deed. Mm -hmm. That land deed was a major fault line in Liberia between the indigenous class and the the, the, the upper class that came to Liberia for many, many years. It was even in our history books. Finally, that issue of the land is finally resolved because the, lead, the deed exists. Now, think about that. The issue of land ownership and the falsification or the denial or the lie about that is ingrained in our psychology and has been passed on in our DNA. Let's not forget, you are, you are a psychologist, Dr. Dr. Francine. When trauma happens to people, we pass it on to our children through our DNA because that it's encoded in us. So we see people misbehaving, cheating people and lying about land business. It doesn't start from today. It started from the original sin when our country was being founded. Mm. Yes. And if we do not rectify that, that is where, I can use the word that uh, Sam used, that is where we have a major problem. As a, dip, a former diplomat, I can't use that word, Sam, as you know, but I read a report just like you, right? So we have to figure out how to come up with the land registry. Lastly, the same problem we have with the Ministry of Information is the same problem we have with the, mini the Ministry of Lands, Mines, and Energy. We have lands, mines, and energy. When land is a very important... It's only, mind, uh, it's only mines and energy now. Correction. It's oh, only it's mines okay, and correct, energy. Okay, I, I accept the correction. Bring land authority now that handles okay. all the land issues, supposedly. Thank you. Thank you for the correction, uh, 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 Isaac. Mm -hmm. Then we need to empower the land authority even mm -hmm. more. Because now we know that Liberia is now in nation building. Wait a second. More and more Liberian we want land to be able to build a property and gain asset, economic assets. So we need to be able to figure that out. So land registry is the best way to go forward. Thank you. Thank you. Good day, Colonel Gray and then Fatima. Uh, good day. You know, what do you think the gov is the government's role? I heard about a tracking system. Okay. I heard that some Liberians are also investing in this tracking system. I heard... Uh, Mr. Jackson said, this is easy to do. We have latitude and longitude. We can do that. So what should the government be thinking? What, what should they be doing about this land matters here? You know, some, uh, somebody in the back, I think they want to come on. <laughs> uh, bring a person. Bring a person on. I know no, that, that bone, bone breaker. And that bone breaker. I have to. Let me conclude and leave before he comes on because it's oh, already limited. Oh. Okay. So remain in the back smooth. <laughs> so, uh, he will come. I'll be in the back that time. I'll be gone. Uh, I think the, the first thing we have to do is awareness. The, gov the government, the government needs to carry on more awareness, specifically the land authority. Uh, the authority needs to carry on more awareness and then we can bring in technology. Technology will help to solve most of these problems. But if the people are not educated, how are they going to use the technology? And that is a process. It's going to take us time. So I believe that the, the best solution to our land issues is awareness before technology and after technology that is you 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 educate people about the technology that will be introduced in making them to know about their land that you can sit on your phone and just do things like i can be right here our own campus or i just locate my campus and view my campus surrounding i can do it or anywhere i view my home surrounding and know what's happening even if it is my first time and move there directly 
using the Google map or whatever means. So we need to educate the people because our system or our country is in a it's it is it, it, a it, it, it's in a state of you know uh starting everything you know everything in liberia is like we we just started any technology thing you think about we just started everything but we are the first though but we just started everything we still have the 19 the 1990 the 1980s or the 1960s oh, way of thinking so in order to uh, rebuild we need to we need to educate people, and when these things are done, I believe the uh, land issues will will reduce a little bit. But we need to educate people, landowners, and prospective landowners need to know their rights. They need to know about technology, how to use it, and then we will move forward. But it's going to take some time. It may not be now. But in the future, land issues will be resolved because people will be educated regarding how to use their land and Thank what you. to do to prevent their uh, to, to prevent people from getting their land. Thank you, Kuti. So let me now give way to Boom Breaker. Colonel Gray, what advice would you give to anyone who uh, may be interested in purchasing land in Liberia, and what do you think the government should be bringing to squatters awareness? Well, um, Madam, before before answering your question, um, ever since I was a, a young man growing up, I just wonder why our our country has not numbered the houses, number everything, digitalize everything. I, you know, I, I wonder within the, the the surrounding our surrounding. If you go to Ivory Coast, they'll give you an address. You come to Liberia, you know, we're still doing this. Uh, you know, this the process, yeah. The rock. You know, I, I sometimes wonder why, why, why our country has not been able to move to that direction because every parcel of property must be digitalized and demarcated, as um, Jackson said. And um, Flomo is talking about using technology. Why, in the face in the abundance of technology, we have not been able to to map our country, digitalize coordinate everything you know so that we know what exists where and when and and by whom you know uh until then i think um we we we'll, we'll have this problem we we'll have this problem because uh and there will be collusion between sub surveyors and people who who know who are in authority uh recently uh, the outgoing government we had you know um, you know, people lost their lives because uh, those people were, were frenzying buying property. And some of those will become the, the new dispute we're talking about, the implosion that we're about to get to. So so if you ask me what government can do, I'll say, well, government should start drawing a scheme, the Land Commission, um, Legis, which is um, geostatistics in, in, in its own operation, should begin to, to, to think about Number in our houses, so that when I when when you ask me where are you going, I'll say I'm going to number ten, Broad Street. It's a demarcation. If you digitalize that, if that title is transferred appropriately, something will shift in the system. So we 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 have to make use of that system, that digital system that Ghana has used, Sierra Leone. Uh, you go to even Guinea. Why, why, why we, why we have not, we have not done that. I mean, if, if somebody can answer that question, then, then um, they would have solved government's problem and our problem, you know, by almost wholesomely. So until then, we're going to be jumping on each other property because uh, anybody who can come up and say I own this, we have no way of, of verifying it from other sources besides the showing of deeds, and those deeds can be duplicated, falsified, and, and so we are in trouble. Thank uh, you. So we can digitalize things. Thank you. Uh, Max, you want to want... Uh, yeah, quickly, quickly. Oh, uh, a very, quickly, a very good friend yeah. of mine just said that... I love this that we're discussing here today. Yeah, let me hear quickly, 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 come in quickly, Senator. A very good friend of mine, uh, uh, Baba Sina, just said something very important, and mm -hmm. I just want to echo that. I think because yeah, many of us are limited, and many of us are limited when it comes to land issue. We're not land expert. We, we don't know the land policy 
very, very well. It will be better for Spoon TV to invite our lay experts and policy people in Liberia to come on, net, on this network to talk about this because it's serious. Stand on, welcome. You. Thank you. Uh, let me go to Fatima and then I'll pass the show over to you, okay? Thank you for coming in. No, 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 no. Yeah, enjoy your show. <laughs> Listen, Fatima, one second. Yeah, I mean, the fact Thank remains, you. everybody... Yeah, I Fatima first and then you come yeah, in. No, Fatima and my sister, everybody doing extremely well. No interruption. You no just problem. interrupted. You just yeah. interrupted. Yeah. Please don't interrupt. You just interrupted. Please I was waiting me. for you. Please don't you interrupt. You came and interrupted okay. the whole flow of the show. The whole okay. flow. <laughs> Can I agree? Oh, man. No, I, I was going you to take, You take attention from here. For Fatima. Fatima, how, what is the role of the justice system in this land? This I mean, I can in, in, in at at the own game. <laughs> you, what, do you think the justice system play an important, important role in solving the land disputes in Liberia so that we can be more, more civil, we can be more um, hospitable to uh, Liberians? Well, good evening, Dr. Richardson, and to the rest of the panelists, and also to all of the viewers around the globe. Um, I, as, as far back as I can remember as a child, I think if I tell you that my family owned Vital, so you know there has always been land dispute in Vital. So anybody that know about Vital, they said they own the water. Well, my grandfather dried the water. They own the Atlantic Ocean. By the way that my grandfather bought the land, dried the water, built the houses, and then they came and put claim on it. They said Vital or for Vi people. And my grandfather was not actually Vi. He was Madingo Vi. So we've always had those things. Uh, but I think the law plays a major role, okay? Um, I, and we need to have honest people in um, now I think Isaac Vaz said that um, the lands, the land, mines, and energy has been separated. I think it's a good thing because there were some individuals in those places who would actually go and look at people's deeds and collab with other people to sell and backdate that new deed to the old land. It happened to me. I bought a land, but they thought I actually paid for to somebody to buy it. I didn't. It was like given to me. So I had the deed because my grandfather was born 19, I mean, 18, 1801. So of course the deed was like 1820 or 1830. And somebody had a recent deed that said 1875 or something like that. I mean, so somebody went and changed it to make, the, make it closer. Well, I guess when we went to court, we actually won the case. I'm just saying people need to be honest in the lens, minds, and energy. And I like the fact that um, Ava said, if we have digital, uh, 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 if we have like electronic based data that can tell people about the locations of their land and monitor it. And um, we, we we are tired of people saying, go on the old road. And you know, the SP gas station, right behind the SP gas station, you know, that yellow one. I'm not talking about a green one, the yellow one. I want that. Then you pop behind the two, two coconut tree that it has. I mean, 1847, the oldest republic on the continent, and we're still giving direction as go to free pole. The light pole, I say the other iron one, the, the, the wood one, that one behind it at my house. I mean, the system is corrupt. I mean, we need bold step. That's why I'm so proud of this president, and I and we need to hold him accountable because accountability was one of the main things in the campaign where people. Uh, he needs. He has nothing to lose. Honestly, he needs to hold everybody accountable. Whoever you are, judges, lawyers. I mean, I was, I was, I was, I was doing case management. I was hearing you talking about those other issues about Jessica, about female genital mutilation, and all those issues. And those are dire issues to my heart. And I think people need to be held accountable. The whole justice system needs an overhaul. I think things are getting better now, but we just need. Everything needs to be overhauled. So, you know, I just think that that needs to happen. Thank you, Fatima. I just actually, and Senator, before I go to, to you, I just actually heard from George Farmola, who has a platform. He was the one who has a digital tracking system in Liberia of Land. Uh, I think, George, it would be a great idea if you could speak to Miss Titi. Your, you sound it sounds like a great plan so that you guys can come on and discuss how you can help Liberia. I really think it's an awesome 
I, I, I really a note here. I think it's an awesome platform to be able to assist Liberia in how we can track our land and how we can, you know, become a part of that system. So I, I really want you to, to get in touch with the business office in Liberia and let Liberia, Liberians know this. Thank you, Fatima. Center, I'm turning the show over to you. Uh, no, don't turn it over to me. Uh, thank you very much. We just, I mean, you guys are almost done. Uh, you are I doing got to to say, I got nothing to say about the land issue. Those that own property in Liberia, own lands in Liberia, they should talk. We, we own no property in Liberia, so we'll be quiet. If you know that you're in Brussels, you're in Europe, you got no property in Liberia, you work at a um, Liberian embassy, just stay there. Don't talk about Liberia <laughs> land. I got nothing. God bless you. You get all the property in Liberia. I mean, Uncle Sam got three. Thank God for you, Uncle Sam. Three or more. You know, we don't have anything in Liberia, so we'll be quiet. You know, I don't know the, 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 the how you call it the, the the land issue, the size, the demarcation, the view. You gotta put something in the air. God bless you. Y'all, you listen. You're going to talk about your land. Now. We got nothing. I told you guys were talking politics. That's why I came on because something happened today. I have all the information about you know two women got killed in the center bush. Uh, the zoo is in, the zoo is in prison. They arrested the zoo. I have never seen it in my life before. They put the zoo in prison. They say I shouldn't talk it. Uh, the police IG is fully aware. Somebody is uh, stayed there. They try. That's, that's a lot of stuff. I will leave that with. Mama Bridge Mensa to discuss it because she's the chair on a gender issue. Uh, but it's bad, Glenny, for two women to just die 25 and 24. They killed them uh, because they said no, they don't want to join the Senate Bush. They have to arrest the zoo. Uh, so maybe that zoo, he will escape prison in the night. He will fly all of it. I don't know, he or she. I don't know. Um, but these are the things I told you guys were talking about. So let me leave. When you guys talk about your land, how many property you got, lady? How many land issue you got? Four. So you got how many land your parents left for you? Ten. God bless you. You all have a good Saturday. And uh, Alpha, what you want to say? <laughs> Alpha, you have muted. Let me show you one piece of land my family left for me. <laughs> it's a little bush. No, it's okay. You're clean it. So, but another thing we want to say that Monday will be we will be having uh John Malu on Monday. John Malu is kind of like very very. I don't know what I say. He's in the middle. Uh, he still have hope. A lot of people know John Malu. Whenever you speak to John Malu, he's straightforward. He will be our guest on Monday. This thing is getting serious, and I'm concerned, folks. Prince Johnson, Yaka Koluba. Uh, most recently, somebody talked about Prophet Key, Heron Pedro Costa, people that created the plane, the train, folks that were on the train. This early, they are not on the train. It's concerning. The Alliance Group, let's talk about them on Monday. Uncle Sam, I know you want to say something about it. The Alliance Group. No, no, yeah. no, no. Listen to me. What one, one of the things I've decided to do on this can I can I finish, please? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. Uh and all these things to me, they are concerned. We need to talk about it. The Nima election, if Prince Johnson went through uh Koga or Jeremiah Kuhn went through Yan Twain, who would be the leader of Nima, all these things coming together. And I hope we all can just buckle up and pass ahead. I am concerned. That's why when I come on the show, I don't talk about land. I talk about politics. I talk about the bread and butter issue, the way forward. And I appreciate you, Glenda. You get 10 acres somewhere in Marsha. Uh, Fatima get all of our time. Uh, her grandfather left her all of our time. From Freeport all the way to the new bridge. And the old bridge belonged to Fatima. Uh, Al Hussein get the Better Casa Hotel. That land for him. That's where he stay at. Uh, Conor Gray got the whole beach in Grand Cape Man. Uncle Sam get all of uh how you call it Ken Johnson Wayne. Ken Johnson Road, Sony Wine and Nippo Street. You enjoy yourself, folks. <laughs> well, Chris Maxwell got the last piece of Labra property in Europe. And, you know, he sold the first one. Uh he got the other one. Uh Dr. Richardson and I get all the bomb mines. They have a B school in bomb mines. Y'all talking about your land. I wish you well. And we'll see you tomorrow. God can bless anybody. Uh, we'll see you on Monday. 
for politics. Let's God, talk, God. Jason. Thank you. I saw so happy. Don't go. Don't go. Don't go. Don't go. Don't go. Stay. You want to see us? You want to see anything? Do your closer. It was a closer. I just did. I got to go back to Vata. I mean, I'm glad you're leaving. Before you can't. You're taking our time. Before you can't aggravate our England. I'm glad you're leaving, man. That female. You the female that just walked now. Fatima, you the female. You the female that just walked in. Fatima on her way to Labrador. Fatima on her way to Labrador to play her part property, the whole Vata. Anybody on Vata, understand yourself. I may not interrupt our show. I say, don't do this, bro. Who wants to see your life? Anybody that, anybody, let me say this. Anybody that get anything in Vata, Fatima coming to take you from there. So let's do our closing, guys. It's uh, about 7.30. <laughs> Can we move to closing right now? Let's start with Fatima. But what are you interrupting me for? Y'all had three hours to talk. I just came for only five I seconds. I am sorry. I thought you said you are, you are. All right, let's, let's take a vote. Who are woman here? Who I want me to leave? I want you to go. If you want me to leave, put your hand up. You want me to leave? Oh yeah, I got two. If you want me, wait, 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 wait. Today, seriously. Yeah. If you want me to leave this show right now, and I will listen seriously. Yes. Listen, but, but wait, 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 guys, wait, wait. Seriously speaking, Doctor Richardson, you want me to stay or you want me to leave? I don't care. You gotta take. You gotta take a position. No, I don't care sure. means. I don't care means you want me to stay. So what's your answer? It doesn't matter to me. You're already here. Okay, thank you. Colonel Gray, you want me to stay or you want me to leave? I want you to stay. Thank you. That's two. Uncle Sam. I want I want you to fly. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Fatiga. <laughs> I want you to leave. Two hands up for you. That's two two. Prince Maswa. <laughs> I, I, I want you to stay fly. <laughs> So me, you want me to say that three, two, Granny? Exactly. <laughs> Granny, go on. Fatima, that three, two. Uh, uh, Fatima, you want me to stay or you want me to leave? You are muted. Fatima said bye. Bye. So, so that three, three. So Granny, are you breaking the tire? You mm -hmm. want me to stay or you want me to leave? Okay. Granny, you gotta speak. We're not hearing you. Bye. Okay. So that four, three. So that four three. Let's see who side asking why going to be. Asking why. Asking why you want me to stay or you want me to leave. I'm the I'm the elder here because Sam Jackson is not acting like an elder. He want you to fly. <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah, I'm taking it though. It's four three. You 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 gotta make me stay or you make me leave. Which one? I'll balance it here, and I'm going by the commenters. Earlier, the people were asking for you. They wanted you on the show. So I say, stay or stay. Uh, All right. So uh, on behalf of my family, myself, and my open source, thank you, Azubar, and all those that want me to stay. You've been having a good show. You'll continue, and I'll see you guys Monday by God's grace. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Fly. Let's do our closing once again. Um, you know, we are moving slowly to a uh, resolution to the land issue in Liberia. You know, I was I'm, I was reading, again, George Famler's, uh platform that he has where he can detect and show you your land while you are in Liberia. I think it's a good thing for Liberians right now that will contribute to, you know, some of the questions that we have in our head about the land business in Liberia. So let's do our closing. We'll start with Fadi Guy. will be the last to go. So you can't just close and leave. As we tend to do. So you have to wait and we all leave together. For Fadiga, Glendy, Maxwell, Mr. Jackson, uh, uh, Connor Gray, Fatima, Azeva, and then myself. Well, it was a great and show. And then, and then too. It was a great show. I pray that uh, Jessica gets justice. I hope she files a civil lawsuit. And we have some like real lawyers that can take on our case. Or she can contact Ben Cham, the, the, the civil rights uh, lawyer. Probably they could get some uh, some uh, some a win in a, a civil law suit in the U.S. But I think Liberia justice system feel her. Uh, we talk about the pimping riders. We talk about uh, a lot of things. Uh, I do not want the government to give in. I think, uh, in as much as we have economic challenges in this country. It is also the duty of the government to ensure the safety 
of every Liberian. Liberians should not be dying for preventable from preventable death. The issue of accident is preventable. Uh, I think one way for these things to go away naturally is to enforce uh, our public safety laws. There have been hammers to be wearing. The number of people to be there. We should not see someone with whole car windshield sitting down. Like I saw this guy with six gallons of gas on a motorcycle. There are just some common sense things that are just disastrous and people see and allow it to go. You should not die because of poverty. That is, it makes no economic sense. We are not many, we are losing a huge portion of our youthful population because we refuse to, to act. I think one way the police can curve the thing is to just simply enforce the law. Or you know, before you drive a motorcycle, you should have all the proper gear, uh, all the proper lighting. If you are caught with all that, uh, the time for them to ride to be restricted, especially at night, people shouldn't be riding those commercial motorcycles uh, late in the night because uh, where the roads are clear, uh, for some of us driving in the night, many times I came close to hitting. In fact, one of them were hit right before me and the driver fled. So it's a safety hazard to them and a safety hazard to the driver. We need to get this right. Uh, we cannot only use poverty as a means to not get things done in this country. We can walk and chew gum, enforce the traffic law, make sure that people are, are, are applying all the safety equipment and not 10 people on motorcycle, mother, child, children. How? My daughter would never get on a motorcycle in this country, no matter how crazy she want to be. It, it's, it's sad. You got 10 people, the mother, the child, you just send in seeing your children to death. It's poverty we know. It's easy to commute. But please, take taxi. Take care, care. Do not put your children on motorcycle. No motorcycle. It's instant death sentence. You know, it's instant death sentence. Do not do it. No matter how much, how fast you, you, you want to get there. It, it is not even cheap. The more expensive than the taxi. So it's not cheap. Uh, it's a public safety hazard. The police should not just turn a blind eye. Uh, there need to be a bicycle route, even on a on a freeway. I see people, you know, uh, I don't think our streets were built for, for the number of bicycle that we, uh, motorcycle that we have. So in the future, I think we should, should make sure that our new uh, uh, engineering should take into consideration that we have motorcyclists now uh, and, and they should have their own route. But uh, uh, this thing needs to happen, honestly. We cannot Thank have people dying for no reason. Thank you, Fadiga. Because, you know, it, it, we want to text it, but thank you, Doc. Thank you. Lendy? What's the you? Thank you. Uh, it's good to be here. Um, we're continuing to do what we can to voice our um, protests against the decision regarding Jessica's um, case. We'll do what we can. Uh, we hope that they will well, listen to listen out to the House of Representatives to see what their investigation will lead to. Um, and we just hope that something can come out of that, um, no matter what it is. What, whatever can come out of that situation will be better because it will serve as a deterrent for for a reoccurrence tomorrow. So um, we're, we're sorry for what happened to Jessica. I know that she's still having some serious residual effects with swallowing and other things, but we just pray that, you know, the comfort she needs, um, she'll be able to get it, even the psychological help that she needs, she'll also be able to get it, which um, my heart goes out to her family, her mother and her twin brother, um, praying that that the government will see that this one was a miscarriage of justice and that something will be done about it. Concerning the land issue, I will hope that something definitive will be done. Um, if like um, George Trumler is saying with Ava, I mean, I will be one of those who will contract their services because that is one thing that I'm afraid of. <laughs> Allocating what properties my parents have and what I need to do with them. Um, so that's something I'm looking forward to. I think that will help a lot of us um, identify the different properties we have and what we need to do with them. So great show, it's been good being here. Thank you. Thank you. Who did I call next? Was it Mr. Jackson? Oh, oh Maxwell, please go ahead and then Mr. Jackson. <laughs> Yeah, uh, for me, my my conversation on the closing is going to be about the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Uh, 
we are, I'm getting information that uh, the ministers the minister was just in Morocco, and has, her visit has been successful. Uh, I got information from the Moroccan uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, Twitter page and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs Facebook page itself that the minister was in Morocco, her visit was successful, and I think I'm getting information that she's be coming back or already back in the country, and the librarian people will be informed of her visit and the outcome of her visit because there were there were uh, issues discussed, tangible issues discussed on behalf of that. I do have a problem, and I'm going to, I've been trying to hold back on this a little bit, but I'm going to be clear about it. There is a problem right now within the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the problem that is permeating within the Ministry of Foreign Affairs right now is communication. I think the Ministry of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs communication team is not communicating well, and they need to buckle up. Uh, from the ministry's perspective, they do right now have a Facebook uh, platform that they are putting posting information, but they are delayed in that information. Most importantly, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs does not have a Twitter page. And I've made it clear to many people around the Ministry of Foreign Affairs that the global information highway is on Twitter or the, the new X. The Ministry of Morocco posted all of the information about our minister visit on their Twitter page. And the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Liberia does not have a Twitter page. It does have a Facebook and Instagram page, but it lacks a Twitter page. And that is bad. I don't know who's running this, and I would think that by now they would have figured that out and get the ministry to have a Twitter page. It is very, very important. Also, our embassies, they are slacking when it comes to communication. Most of them, their Facebook page are either existing or non-existent. They do not have proper information on their page. They need to buckle up. They are slacking, and this is very, very bad. Diplomacy is also communication, and that has to be fixed. Lastly, on the issue of special envoy, I've seen recently the issue of special envoy being created, special envoy going other places, special envoy doing X, Y, and Z. Two-track diplomacy can has consequences, has a downstream consequences if it is not properly coordinated and collabor and there is no collaboration. Recently, we noticed, I noticed that. And I have communicated that with a few of my friends, and we've all talked about that. In fact, as a matter of fact, Diplomats with foreign diplomats in Liberia have also noticed that as well. And they are wondering whether we are sending two different messages because all of the messages about uh, coming out of uh, special envoy should be channeled through the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And we are seeing that they are doing on their own. They are posting it on their own Facebook page and all that kind of stuff like that. Special envoy should not be doing that. I don't know the legal uh, 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 the legal boundaries or legal parameters as it pertains to that is uh, just a Liberia, and that has to be fixed. For those who are uh, uh, around the office of the president should fix this and coordinate it Thank closely you. with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs because two-track diplomacy can become a dangerous affair for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And the signal Thank is you. sent, if we're not carefully handled, can be a bad one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Jackson. Well, thank you very much. It was a very good show. Uh, I just want to re-emphasize again uh, <clears throat> that uh, when I went to Liberia in 1978, I wasn't thinking about a, re a revolution or an insurrection. I, I left my cushy job at Chisholm Hadden Bank. I was recruited by Ellen Salif. She's alive today and the late John Bestman and Charles Green. I came to Liberia just to work and revolution came. So I didn't come to incite violence. And then and I'm not inciting violence on the show now by saying that if you're going to put down uh, EPS officers, EPS officers who have guns, I think you should do it in a way that is orderly, that has minimal impact to their person, to their livelihood, and also uh, protects and preserves the integrity of the institution. So remove them, but do it in the humanistic way and do it in a way that doesn't uh, impact their impact them badly. Look, the other thing that's very important is this uh, Elaine issue. Okay, um, I'm, I'm I'm fortunate that um, I inherited a family house, you know, <clears throat> and I also um, with my previous marriage we also had a house, but I gave it out in 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 a divorce. But listen, 
Um, the land issue is extremely important. The creation of wealth, the preservation of wealth can only happen if you do it through land. And in developed societies, and I don't know about in Liberia, but 60% of wealth is inherited. This is from uh, Thomas Piketty, his book, okay? Capitalism in the 21st century, right? So if 60% of wealth is created, now people ask how come the Jews and the others, you know, they, 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 they can have access to finance. We're gonna do that through instruments like land and insurance policies. Right? When the Jewish baby is born, they put insurance, a million dollar insurance on that Jewish baby, right? And they pay it collectively as a group. And when, they, and when something happens to, the, to, that, to that Jewish child, 70 years later, the whole life insurance policy has created what? It's created an investment portion and a term portion that you can use, you can extract money. You can borrow money from insurance policy. That's the way you should be able to borrow money from land to go into business and create a thriving society. So if you don't fix this land issue, not only do we relegate ourselves to perpetual second-class citizens in our own country, but also will make it difficult for capital formation. And only private finance capital can build Liberia. And we have the land, we can use the land as collateral in all spheres, our mountains, our yeah. rivers, all of our land is worth trillions and trillions of dollars. Let's get it together. Thank God you, Mr. Jackson. God bless Liberia. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. I'm gonna to go to Connor Gray and then we'll go to Fatima. Okay, um, I think um, the justice system once more failed uh, Jessica and um, uh, probably failed even the, the the guy who absconded, in my opinion, or the guy who was uh, set free. If we do judicial reform, we probably will be able to, because OJ Simpson, as much as you didn't like him, he walked. That was because of a good justice system. So both um, the accused and the accuser or the con convicted and the or the um, the acquitted you know they they both are victims because of our justice system we need to look keenly into our justice system and try to bring some some reform because the audio that i listened to uh was quite disturbing um you know where people were skimming how to actually uh lay their case so this guy can walk freely and that's not good for us and pen pen rider you know last time i was in like i went to a, a gfk I, I mean there's a whole ward of the, the people there with with you know cut of limbs you know some of the scars on those people are so it's terrible I, I mean as much as we're talking about survivorhood uh, but we also have to be able to protect our people from their own self that's why government exists so I hope um, this uh, move to, you know, to position them, it's, 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 it's all about safety. And then uh, on the issue of the, um, of the land, again, I will, I will emphasize, I don't know if being able to identify land by drone uh, is enough, is sufficient. Um, the issue is not about where the land is, is is located, but it's about who own the land, and um, and that struggle about um, who legitimately owns the land is is probably what the issue is, not what can be picked up from a drone, what can be picked up from here and there. Yeah, we know the land exists here, but the idea is who is the rightful owner, and that's where government is to come in and institute some digital way of. Um, of firstly identifying the land, demarcating the land, and then identify the owner through zoning. We're sluggish with our zoning laws. That's why people are building on top of a on top of sewage pipe. People are building in the in the alleyways. You know, 
we just have not been able to use technology to the extent from, you know, albeit whether older technology or modern technology, we just have not been able to put our hands on that thing until today we don't have our, our address system, you know, properly zoned where we know what property exists where. A parcel of land is can be identified through, um, you know, the, the zoning where it, it's not just a land, but we know exactly the chain of title, who owned it before, who was the first person to procure from government, and then from there you put it in the in a in a digital uh, system. I used to be a real estate agent. We still have chain of title. That chain of title, you go from day one and see who was the very first individual that procured our land from government. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of, a lot of the land in, in Liberia were not owned properly. Thirty seconds, Mr. Yeah, Green. a lot of them were not owned properly. So I think we have to be able to look at uh, the postal and and tell it uh, the postal service, uh, postal service. I don't know why they exist if they cannot jump on this initiative and try to number our houses and and demarcate property along with um, um, you know other agencies that are responsible. This this is going, Madam Salut try, but it didn't go anywhere. I think our land. Yeah. Um, authorities are not doing well, along with uh, postal service. Thank uh, you. I'll leave here, Thank you. Thank you, Fatima. Hey, Dr. Richardson, um, to all of the panelists. I would just like to say a couple of things, although I was not here to formally address them. One pertains to Uncle Sam. Uncle Sam, you are one of the elders um, on this um, network, and your voice has volume. And I think tonight you were actually inciting violence. Uh, I listened to you as I was driving, coming home, and you were talking about um, when you were saying particularly that, you know, taking a bunch of EPS people and letting them, sitting them down without anything, you know, and talking about, you sounded in that moment like you were saying that they could do something. Well, Liberians are civil society. Okay, um, people that will serve our president or our dignitaries, they need to be qualified and they need to, to, to know, to have the technical know. And they're they are not supposed to, people in those kind of sensitive positions are not supposed to be loyal to individuals. They're supposed to be loyal to country. So, I mean, you've been there since some of us were born. And you've been in all of in, uh, every time I hear, I'm being honest, every time I hear you say, oh, Liberia has failed or our country is not doing well, Liberia, the, the global economy, this economy of Liberia is destroyed, blah, blah, blah. Uncle say you were always there and you never made it better. You never did anything. So we are now trying as you know, young progressive for all of us to come together and revamp this with economists like you there so to at least lead the way. I don't think our people were cannibals, seriously. I, in, in a, maybe back in the days when y'all were born, but okay, in, in Liberia, in modern day Liberia, we were we 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 are educated people. Uh, we know the difference. We've had impact on ourselves. We we're trying to re-educate our people to to love themselves because what just happened to Jessica? I feel like Liberian people from the time I was growing up. That's why you know. It bothered me to say that we, we Liberian people, we love everyone. We treat everyone as equals. But Liberian people have a special thing. Even Lebanese people, they think they are white people. Mm -hmm. They always say they Lebanese, they're white men. Because Lucas was a white man. So he comes to our own country, try to slaughter our own uh, a woman, and gets away with it because of bad justice system, because they say they cannot find the, the, the evidences. Now, what what, what else, what else, other evidence do you need? All women, we need to rise up. We need to speak for Jessica, because I am Jessica. As Hillary Clinton puts it, women's rights are human rights, and human rights are women's rights. Liberia is not accepting that women are equal partners, but to what extent, how, what is the percentage of women, in, even in government function? Hmm. Is, last 10 years that we've started incorporating women in, in the national discussion. Okay. We need to stand up for ourselves. I went to Liberia two years ago and I spoke against female uh, genital mutilation because as culture, the Madingo women, the Va women, those are the people that are the bulk of them. You know, they, 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 they would take them and do those things to them. 
with impunity. I'm not I'm not going against anybody. If that's your choice, if that's the, that's where you want to go, by all means. But I'm just saying that it is time that we, we treat our women with respect. We treat them as equal partners because we are equally as educated. We are equally educated. Dr. Richardson was sitting out here analyzing people. You know, they, they, they just do things in Liberia. Nobody even check her mental status to know how can someone coming from experiencing a traumatic event and you ask her to regurgitate every detail. And if it doesn't match, you say there was not substantial enough evidence. Come on, y'all, please, man. Y'all go, please. This case needs to be overturned. We need to go back to court, and Jessica needs to get another day in court. There is no jeopardy, uh, double jeopardy in this because she was asked to receive ten thousand and refused. The next thing I wanted to say is about the land issue. Wait a second, Fatima. I think we all know that with the land issue all across the globe, you can see right now Palestine and Israel. The land issue is no joke. It's in Liberia that one man was sending land to thirty people and think it's fun. It needs to stop. People need to understand that as we age, we get mature. We need to do the right thing. Joseph Walker, like I said, he has, you know, he needs to make decisions that will not, everybody would never be happy. But if the bulk of Liberians are happy, our country will survive. Thank Women's you. Christian is human rights. So please, my people, let's try to ensure that Joseph Walker get justice. Thank you. As if I and then good day and I'll close. Yeah, thank you. Um, the Jessica situation is troubling again with all the information. And I really think there should be some advocacy around it. I don't know what the real legal procedure is. Um, but we know our justice system is compromised and how we can ever get it right. Even we're talking about land. The, the justice system is compromised again when it comes to land, when it comes to making decisions about land, when it comes to, you know, verifying these. The games are too many that um, data and information about land is so critical, but it's absent. Um, some of the experiences I have with land, some of the experiences George have with land, property being raised so property being encroached upon, trespassing, um, arbitrary decision by people in power to come and say they're taking your land or pressure you one other way for you to move that way and then take your land on this other side. So the, the, the use cases and the stories around land are so many and to a large extent, it has affected nearly every librarian, whether it was the issue in Nima with land between the Mandingos and, you know, the... Manas slash Gio people, whether it's in, um, you know, among families who inherited a property or land and they can't divide it properly, whether it's for people who don't know where the land is, but they got deeds available because the deeds back in the day were just directional. It gave degrees, minutes, and seconds where you can find where you know the land, but it doesn't have any um, GPS coordinate for you to know exactly where the land is. So a lot of people got land all over the place. They don't know where it is. So there's a lot of opportunity for us to move this land um, discussion to a higher level, really present the solutions to the issues that people are facing. And um, I believe it was probably Remy who said it right, that it's the court will decide, yes, we can do all the um, identification, we can do the surveillance we can show you the land we can put it on but it has to be the certified version right because when you have the certified version of the land anybody can kind of say oh i won't buy lane marshall oh i saw the land but let me see who the owner people can check online and know right away if they intruding on somebody's property or somebody who doesn't have the authority to sell a property is trying to sell it that's one of the most important aspects of having a cadastro so hopefully having this discussion getting more people involved and seeing all the issues around land and that they can be solved and there are already solutions existing, but we just need to work and get the data to make it available to the people, they will understand it better. And you know, Thank like you said, hopefully TT will give us that opportunity to come on for us to really discuss it with a focus, you know, 
uh, um, length of time where we're just focusing only on the issues. Thank you, Thank you. Abba. Thank you. Good day. You're on mute, As we wait for a good day to come in, uh, some of the things to look forward to, uh, John Mullu will be here next week. Uh, we are still trying to get Jessica and her mother to come in and tell the story. Good day, let me hear you. I'm okay now. Good, yes, you are. Go ahead. <coughs> I'm sorry. Uh, many thanks to everyone. Like, like I said previously regarding uh, Jessica's case, uh, first, I appreciate the legislature or the House of Representatives for their action, but let's direct the proper channel. Uh, let us now begin to call on the Liberia Bar Association to call these lawyers, the lawyers from both parties, because they are on a one arm brother. Let them call these people for professional check the profession, I think they should have ethic committee that will do that. Let them call these people because there is uh, there is an audio linking individuals to uh, unethical behavior. Let them investigate that. And we can also call on a justice ministry uh, to, to ask for review of the case. That's another way we can do it and called on the judiciary uh, to investigate the uh, the judge uh, that, that, that went through that case. Those are things that we can do surrounding what happened to really know what went wrong. If we leave that in the legislature, yes, they have oversight. They will call and say, this is what happened, this is what happened, but what next? When they come up with that, what next? So uh, the professional body that is responsible for lawyers will have to probe into this to investigate its members to know what went wrong and to, to, to establish if the audio is real. And then we will know what really went wrong. If it is real, then we know now that, yes, there uh, were fair play. And we talk also about uh, traffic, right? And I said... Uh, we talk about uh, road safety, and I said, basically, the institution of government that has to make sure that accident in our country is reduced <coughs> is the Ministry of Transport because they give people driver lesson, not like not like us in Europe or in America or other parts of the world. Before you get a driver lesson in America or Europe, you have to go through tests. They have to do everything in, to, to, to establish that, yes, you are qualified. Yes, they still have road accidents and so forth, but Liberia is worse because people are not trained. We give driver lessons to our friends, family members, and whoever that just go to that job, to that ministry and pay their money, I think 35 or 45, they are qualified to get a driver lesson. And if we put in the right, the right procedures, I'm sure... Uh, we will reduce it a bit because people will be trained and they will know road sound. And I, I also talk about people in our country who don't even know uh, one road sound. You stay on our road, the crosswalk, they, they will kill you. They don't know whether they have to stop or not. We need to start training these people. And again, to to just inform you, uh, uh, that has to do with the motorcyclist. They are expected to come out on Monday and uh, I support the government. Others say the system is now okay. I went to Cote d'Ivoire before traveling to Europe. When I was traveling with the government for the first time, I went to Cote d'Ivoire, Abidjan. Abidjan has a system. Yes, they have motorcycles, but there are uh, certain parts they don't they don't move there. I went to Ghana, they have it. In Nigeria, they have it. Why we cannot do it in Liberia? I think we have to leave professionals to do their job. The, the politicians do their job. If the police deem it necessary that these people are not to plow the mean streets, 
and they are the cause of certain things, we should stop it. It happened in 2016. I was in Liberia. We saw it. It worked. Uh, it, yes, when they started it for, I think, a month or plus, we had noise in the city, but at the end of the day, the guy used to it and road accident reduced. If you check road accident, motorcyclists are contributing greatly to it in a very terrible way because they are not trained to the system. So I think uh, we should allow the police to do their job, but they are expected to stage a mass protest on Monday and they will be around Capitol Hill. You have to be careful if you are moving around there. They are moving and they had a meeting yesterday. One of their targets will be any vehicle that come their way, they will damage it because now they are like on a loose angle. We have to watch out for them on Monday, but I support the government or the police. Let them maintain our law and Liberia is not a land. It, Liberia, I'm sorry, Liberia is not like Haiti where you have gang leaders ruling, uh, you know, various parts of the country, including the capital. We need to have law and order. Thank you. Yes. So I'm going to do my closing now and then we'll bring the show to a, to an end, okay? I'm going to first start off by saying justice denied to Jessica is justice denied to all women. We have to come to a place in Liberia where it's not just okay to have the first female president in Africa, but yet and still we discriminate against women legally and socially. What happened to Jessica was completely illegal and social discrimination. We heard Jessica's story. She told us multiple times. Her mother came, came to the Sarah platform and told the story. We had uh, Lucas go to our country, broke all of the laws, including our traditional marriage law and our constitutional marriage law. And then, you know, got acquitted on charges of attempted murder. How does that happen? I don't know. Um, I don't know what all the, what the answers are in terms of finding legal support for Jessica's in this country. We have to understand first that the United States do not like, I learned today actually from a very good person who I trust their, their judgment about, about these things, that America tend to not like their citizens being uh, put in other justice systems. That's why, in fact, America is not even a signatory to the international law court. If you check that, and I did follow up, I checked that out, that is true. For some reason, they don't trust, trust the citizen in the hands of other justice system. So how are we supposed to uh, call for justice for Jessica in this country? I'm not sure. I did sign a petition by change.org. I'm telling everyone, if you can, check out change.org. They are asking Liberians to sign a petition for Jessica. Hopefully we can raise alarm uh, to her story. They will, are, will probably, I, I assume, present this uh, signature page. If there's a lot of Liberians that sign it, we can raise um, awareness to the, the, the powers to be in this country. So we'll continue to explore what can we do. I, I don't want to feel hopeless. The second thing, this land issue, many of us have interesting story. I'll just give you two brief interesting story. One is, you know, my sister-in-law kind of oversee the farm that our father left for us. We have a D for it. I like to say that the first place that we like to start. So she was telling me a story recently when I was in Liberia. She said she went on the farm and she and my brother were sitting on the farm and just they just heard this buzzing noise. <laughs> So they, they decided that they were going to go check and see what was happening. When they went in the bushes to go check and see what was happening, somebody had started a big cassava farm on our land. Okay, yes, they were actually cutting using power saw to cut the, the trees and the woods down on our property. So when she went to go ask them, y'all know you are encroaching on the land. They say, oh, ma, we sorry, we'll, we'll give you some cassava. We're planting cassava here. We'll give you some cassava. So, so this is where we are with the case. My second involvement with the court system in Liberia involving land businesses, how serious this is. Uh, my grandfather built a house for my late aunt, Lucretia Mason. Mr. Jackson probably know her. After Benedict Mason had divorced her for interesting reasons, my grandfather didn't want to leave her homeless. That was his, his daughter. So he decided that he would build a house for her in the Fiamma area. He built a house for her. My, my, my aunt has one child who is in the United States somewhere. And my father obviously was next to kin. Um, we are in a battle for this land business because my aunt raised a child. And this child is justifying her need to keep the land away from the Chinua family because 
she carried chima bucket for my aunt okay so this is where, where we are in the court system and these are the things that we need to look at the the, the, the command of title who gets what title uh land that i was in family uh how should they stay into family so we got a lot to do in our country regarding the land business and i i look forward to having been i mean i'm sorry mr formula come come here and and discuss how can we identify our land in liberia um as far as the eps yes i agree that there's a lot of misfits in the government if they did an audit they found that these people were not fit to serve and if they do any audits in any of the department and find that you are not fit to serve they're not any problem in liberia you you, you will be doing a disservice to yourself when you're supposed to produce okay when you're supposed to work and you can't do the job that is a shameful business to me and i hope to everybody else when somebody asks me you know i know my expertise is not in econ economics if you promise to, to uh you know the the lra i will just be so ashamed to go there i don't have the competency to work in lra so please if you know you're not fit for the job just leave the job to the people who are fit there shouldn't be any fuss there's so many things i hope that like we, today we discuss the land issue i hope one day we'll have the opportunity to discuss agriculture in our country i hope that oh maxwell you wanted to say something yeah i just want to make a quick announcement but you, once you're done i'll make an announcement quick then we'll get close oh okay thank you thank yeah, you yeah uh yeah so when it comes to you know misfits in the government just go a lot of people can benefit from agriculture in our country as it is in fact agriculture is complete contributing to our economy all you got to do you don't need high sophisticated skills all right you can go and just you know find somewhere and start planting maybe that cocoa maybe that cassava maybe that corn maybe that cucumber all of those things are making money in our country oil palm you know my husband has my, my husband my, my father has a small oil uh a palm on his on the land that we have that is still imagine he planted those that oil palm product in the 60s the people are still benefiting from the oil palm on the land right now we know oil palm is in everything makeup or you can cook it or you can do whatever it is get involved in those kind of businesses you don't have to wait okay to say oh they fire me and feel sad about you moving into a transitioning into another career the government oh, please when we get when they when, when international organization give those grants for farmers for mechanized farming let the politicians not take the grants and, and only keep that information to themselves make those that information public so our citizens can benefit from it let them know that the, the 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 imf the world bank the us they are giving grants to liberians for farming in fact i think that the imf and the, the world bank should change that direction instead of just uh making awareness give uh, awareness jingle put it on the air tell liberians how they can find uh, uh these grants to 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 promote farming in the country on that note i'd like to say it was a great show um you know it was a very quiet show i want to thank everybody for coming in today Prince Maxwell, you have an announcement? Yeah, yeah quickly. Uh, re the Republic of Liberia is about to go through a major a major tourism event uh, mm -hmm. on the May 23rd to the 28th, 2024. It's called the African Tour 2024. It's a surfing event. Why am I bringing this up? Prince, this surfing I believe event, they pay for the time, so they, it's coming. Oh, no, 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 it's, it's, it's kind of different on this story, concerning completely different. Oh, oh okay. What, what, I'm talking, what I'm talking about is that the way in which we're trying to rebrand our country, these information are part of the rebranding of our country. Yeah. I surveyed the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Only two embassy is carrying this information on their social media. And we have more than one, more than two embassies around the world. It's a shame. It is a shame that our embassies around the world are not carrying this information to the audience that they are serving, that Liberia is rebranding itself and they are doing something far away from war. I think our embassies need to get in the business of finding good information like this information and giving it and selling it out there to the other people that are there right now. That's what you right say when you people, internet. Web pages. This, this information, this information, not even on the Ministry of Foreign Affairs social media page. They can't. They, and they that's also it. sad as well. Mm -hmm. The Ministry, the Ministry of Information has it, but the Ministry of Foreign Affairs does not have it. And that's the embassies sad. only two: the one yes. in Abidjan and the one in Germany. Other than that, 
No one else is carrying it. That yeah. is sad. And yeah. those each, those individuals that are communication attaché in the embassy need to do that job. They need to do that job. Okay. Because man. this Thank is you. not doing a job. Okay. Thank you, guys. I want to speak to you guys later. God bless you all. Yes. Thank you, guys. I'm done myself for the day. James, good day. Thank you for being here. For helping out with the show. Bye, bye, guys. You and your boss can count the show now, James. But you mute that, you mute that, James. James, you are muted. I'm good. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay now. Oh, okay. All right, folks, thank you so much for being a part. This is how we come to the end of uh, Wow, you went up edition. again. I don't know what's going on, but. All right, then just cut it up. Okay, okay, we'll just. Yeah, well. yeah, 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 two to spoon. Kilibamba, 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 kilib